They're coming to get you, Barbara. Welcome to Slug Plot. <laughs> I immediately <laughs> saw that. Oh my god. <laughs> I was headbanging to our song. Uh, all of you audio listeners, come check us out on YouTube. <laughs> and then click off the video immediately. <laughs> yeah. Uh, hey, look, I'm Slimer's ugly cousin. I'm filling in for... <laughs> No, um, welcome to Slash Lot, everybody. I'm Sam the Damn Blends. I'm joined today by my co-host, Casey the Killer Kelderman. Casey, how are you doing tonight? What's spooking, Sam? Oh, a lot spooking. Uh, we a are. Lot. We're we're excited to do this. Uh, this is kind of going to be a, another sort of recent watch dump episode, but like maybe a, with a little more. With a purpose. This time. We're, we're, yeah, we're separating them into mm-hmm. categories. Uh, so, yeah, we're just hey, going to talk hey, about what we saw. What's Sam, up? I, I was just going to ask. We're missing someone. Where is he? Where is we, Mr. We Blakenstein are missing Ginnethan? someone. Blakenstein Ginnethan, I think, will be joining us shortly. Um, we he should be rising that. from the grave to join us again. Yeah. We, uh, we, have some jumper cables hooked up to him. There's some waiting for the light, neck. waiting for the lightning to strike, and he shall appear. Yeah, we're in South Dakota. Snow already hit today. Wonderful. Yeah. Um, walked outside for the first time at like three thirty and got hit in the face by <laughs> snow, and I was like, "That's not okay." Um. <laughs> yeah. So Blakenstein will be joining us in a little bit. But for this episode, we just decided to do something special where, like, you know, it's October. It, it, October just happened. Halloween just happened. We're all horror nuts 24 mm-hmm. 7, you know, eight days a week, 52 weeks a year, blah, 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 all that good stuff. But, like, October is just special, you know? Mm-hmm. So we decided to talk about all the stuff that we, like, binged in, in, in October mm-hmm. leading up to Halloween. And our main topic is going to be what we saw at the State Theater because the State Theater in Sioux Falls has just been killing it with their programming, and we all saw multiple things. Neither of us saw as much as Blake, I don't think. His list probably... At the State? state. I don't think... We might actually be pretty close to Blake at the State. I think we might be closer than we think. Other watches, I think we are, 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 are blowing him out of the water. In terms of what yeah. we watched in October, but he said he has a few things to throw in since he's been gone for like three months on this show. So that'll be nice to yeah. hear what's what Blake's been watching. Uh, Sam, yeah. before we get started here, I'm just throwing this out here live on the show because we haven't done this in a while. We have a f- thing called fan slashing. Oh, we do have a thing called fan slashing that I forgot about until just now. I did too, and I think we might just need to come up with something on the fly and I'm going to pitch this. Okay. okay? And I'll, we'll, okay. we'll pitch it to Blake too, is that our okay. main topic is about what we watched at the state theater in Sioux Falls, South Dakota this October. Okay. We all have to fan slash a movie that the state theater should play next year in October. Okay, so pick a pick an October movie for the state to play next. Year. Yeah, hell yeah, I like yeah. that. Like yeah. a one movie, if we get one pick, one fan slash, one fan. I don't know what's what's another for an October. I'm gonna from... say for an October late night. Yeah, yeah, for a mm-hmm. late night, so yeah. we can we'll go pick, really weird. We'll pitch that to Blake when he comes on too. I think that'll be easy enough that we can think of something on the fly, and I. I'm sure all of us have something in the back of our minds already. Hell yeah. 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 I'm I'm not going to go with the obvious one. 
which I know all of our listeners probably thought of immediately. But chopping yeah. mall. Yes, yeah, I'm not gonna go. I'm not gonna go chopping mall. So you guys are gonna time. actually have some suspense wait to wait until the end to see what I'm gonna. And they do. already played Lost Boys. I mean, who knows? What yeah, they already played play Lost now. Boys. Uh, they actually played a lot of my favorites. Uh, they played. They played Bride. They played. Yeah, I mean, there's so yeah, much. They- they, um, they they crushed it the year, this year so much so I couldn't make yeah. everything I wanted to because they had too much going on and that's that's and that's yeah. kind of a a blessing and a curse which I love. Mm-hmm. Yeah, say so, I mean we talked about it right before we got on. There's one in particular that you got to see that I didn't make and it bums and like, me out because it's legit one of my favorite movies of all time. And I I hope they play it again sometime soon. Well, yeah. I know probably not anytime soon soon, mm-hmm. but I hope they do play it again in the future because I love that movie with all my heart. And, well, I mean, yeah. I, likewise, they played my favorite horror movie of all time and I didn't see it. They also had my favorite yeah. slasher icon and I didn't go watch it. So we'll yeah. talk about those. Yeah, yeah exactly. Exactly. Uh, so, I mean, we can get into our fresh meat, right? Fresh meat. Yeah, fresh meat. Uh, do you want to do like the ones that we're not going to talk about a lot first? Like the ones we're just going to be like, yeah. this is what we watched. We don't need to talk about these because they're like ones we watch every year. We've already mm-hmm. watched before that type of thing. Yeah, I have okay. almost tw- 20 movies on here. And there's a few where I'm like, yeah, hi, uh, like up thumbs up recommend. I don't have much else to say about it because just yeah. a thumbs up recommend. Yeah, same, same for sure. So, you want yeah. me to 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 to, to start? Uh, because there's a few sure. I want to start with that I know Blake just won't care about because he's not what we call on this show hashtag doheads. That's what uh, <laughs> Sam and I are. So I'm going to start off with some dohead specials here. Uh, that sounds gross, but I like it. Um, yeah. I, I watched some Scooby Doo movies this October. I know one of them you watched too, and I don't think we've talked about it on here yet. Uh, it's maybe not. Str- Straight out of nowhere, Scooby Doo meets Courage, the Cowardly Dog. I might have talked about it, but I don't know. I can't remember. It's been That's so true. long since we've yeah. done this. Um, again, yeah, the newest Scooby Doo straight to video movie finally gets to meet Courage. It's kind of insane that they've never done this before. Uh, yeah. I was, I'm kind of lukewarm on it. It's just cool to see Courage back, which I am a hundred percent for grew up on courage the cowardly dog that show is terrifying i was just underwhelmed by the overall villain because i know what both courage and scooby-doo can do and i'm like yeah these are pretty lame they're like uh oh, see, bug, I... the bug creatures i'm like yeah this this is kind oh, of oh a... i see what you mean i thought you were talking the reveal at the end like who it no, is no, no. and i was like oh I... no that's incredible i love that <laughs> I like those. It's just throughout yeah. the you know eighty minute <laughs> runtime, most of that is the bugs, and I'm like, yeah, this is kind of lame for Courage and Scooby Doo. Ah, oh, man, I I gotta agree to disagree on. I I love this movie through and through. Uh, it was everything I wanted from the standpoint of both a Courage and a Scooby Doo a, a, a do head. Um, but yeah, I I understand, but I also like I don't know. I mean, there's like I enjoyed, one one shot. I enjoyed myself for this. Yeah. Is it the mo- it the montage toward the end? <laughs> the the rap? Yeah. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> I thought it was funny. <laughs> no, I love the uh I love the uh shot where it's Eustace putting the dogs in the car and you just see Scooby and Courage sitting shotgun and the camera pans over and <laughs> it's one of the bugs that gets in the truck <laughs> and just their reaction like for some reason, that shot alone just cracked me up. Like, I, I love that moment. I've watched that movie twice, actually. So, um, as I tend to do, mm-hmm. I, I really I really dug it. Um, I hope we get more Scoo slash Courage stuff I, in the I, future. I, I, I do, too. It's definitely worth a, a watch if you're a fan of either or both of those, for sure. Uh, yeah. But one I watched, uh, I think it was like the night before Halloween. I watched Scooby-Doo and the goblin king uh and that was my like uh i dig that one big like halloween scooby-doo movie uh that that i highly recommend uh tim curry gets to play a villain in the scooby-doo franchise again i think it's a fun uh hollow halloween themed scooby-doo movie gets a bit into like mythical fairies stuff and i'm like i don't yeah. care about that give me the halloween 
Yeah, it definitely works better as a Halloween movie than when it leans into like the fantasy elements, but I, I enjoy that one quite a bit too. All right, that's that's it for Scooby Doo right now, uh, and I'm gonna take this 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 pause here to introduce reintroduce back to the show for the first time, I guess, since July, Mister Blakenstein Ginnifin. There he is. Hey, I didn't know Bobby Cannavale was on this podcast. Yes, yes. <laughs> Hola, amigos. How are you? What is Good, up, you, man? Blake? Sipping on a Coors Light for the show, uh, even. America's beer. America's beer. <laughs> on this Veterans Day. How's it going, guys? It's going great, man. It is this awesome. Is, it's good to have you back. Yeah. It's good to be back. Uh, it's it, it was a long hiatus, but um, I'm back. Yeah. Well, yeah, we 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 missed you, Blake. I, I miss you guys too. We um, got the Scooby Doo shit out of the way first. We did that for you. We did. Hashtag do heads. <laughs> <laughs> Is it all you guys talked about so far? Is that, that's, that's it so far. Yeah. And we oh, picked, right. We we picked our fan slashing for this episode. What what was what was the thing? We're what going was... to pitch a movie, a late night movie next October at the state. Okay. Yes. So that's going to be our. We'll do that at the end. Oh, th- that's that's yep. the fan cast. Is just we're, na- we're picking a movie for a late night. Yes. Yeah, because we forgot to actually pick an actor before this, so we just decided that was the best way to go about it. We just want to okay. do that at the end of the show, so we have time okay. to think about think okay. about it. That's going to be tough because I feel like when we did our um, our our like all nighter thing, I feel like a lot of mine would just be that, but I'll have to think <laughs> of something different. Yeah, I was about to say mine's not going to be chopping mall. We've already <laughs> people are going to have to wait and see what I'm going to pick, which I don't know because I'm not going to pick Chopping Mall. And I'm like, well, what other movie do I ever talk about? So, <laughs> It's a good one. I, I, it just, is. I, I dig the Chopping Mall. Mm-hmm. All right. Should we keep going with some uh, fresh fresh meats? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Do you want me to just start yeah. rattling shit off that I have that I don't care about to uh, en- enough to talk about at length? Sure, sure. Just, and yeah. then I can do yeah. the same with the stuff that I don't need to talk about at length, and then we can talk about the other stuff at length. All right. I'll go quickly here through the October lineup. Uh, oh I watched the, the the Disney Legend of Sleepy Hollow, uh, the like 20 okay. minutes Ichabod Crane short, uh, the best interpretation of, of Sleepy Hollow ever, in my opinion. Ooh. Okay. Uh, yeah, and there's a fun nod to the Scooby Doo movie that I was just talking about, where they have a Ichabod and Mr. Crane, uh, Ichabod Crane, uh, little sequence in the Goblin King Scooby Doo. Uh, mm-hmm. another Disney movie that is a favorite I have to watch every Halloween, a favorite of Mr. Andy, the fat dude who digs flicks, Heller, <laughs> Hocus Pocus. Uh, I watched that twice this October because it is a five star banger, and Andy cannot tell me otherwise. Did you go to the state at all for that or not? I did not. I watched it in the theater last year at the West Mall. Okay. Okay. You know, uh, it plays not, great in a crowd too. I, I was going to say, I'm not here to fight the, the zeitgeist around it either way. I just, I'm, I'm actually really excited to watch it with my kids eventually. So, yeah. uh, I still have never seen it. So mm-hmm. yeah. Wait, wait till your kids are old enough. Yeah. We're getting yeah. there. It's a fun uh, one. It's a fun one. I watched Alvin and the Chipmunks, uh, Trick or Treason. I I oh, think I watched this as a kid. I don't know if I did. I don't remember. I was, <laughs> Never heard I, of it. I was looking for the Wolfman or the Frankenstein one, and this is the only one I could find on YouTube for free. Oh, it's okay. fine. It's like five. Oh, well. it's, it's like five Halloween themed Alvin and the Chipmunks from that era, which is like what I grew up with. Hmm. Okay. Well, I watched Alvin and the Chipmunks Meet Wolfman because that's a must-watch every October. Whoa. It's a banger. Um, how, is, how long is that one? Uh, it's a full length. I want to say it's oh. like a 80-minute, okay. yeah. like little 80-minute movie. It's it's fun. It's uh, it's great. Yeah. Larry Talbot moves in next door. It's like, it's Fright Night, but with Chipmunks. <laughs> I, I, I'm, less I'm, I'm thinking of creating like some sort of like horror night like I used to do. And instead of having like it based around two movies, just sort of be like tons of commercials, 
shorts, animated stuff, and a movie, and just sort of do like all of that together. I think that'd be a lot of fun. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, maybe next year we'll actually have a big Halloween party like we <laughs> planned the last. Year. I know. <laughs> I know. I know. We gotta we just do it. Keep not doing yeah. it, so we just need to do it. <laughs> next year's the time, boys. Mm-hmm. Uh, I watched Leprechaun Two. I had never seen Leprechaun Two before. It's oh! It's not good. Is that New York? No, what? It's the best one. The it's in Los, no, An- Los it's Angeles. Not. No, 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 Sam. Oh, my God. No, no, it's no, no, the no. perfect blend of humor no. and scary with Warwick no. Davis. No, 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 no. I mean, it reminded me of it is a close second, but. No. Come on. <laughs> Leprechaun in space. That's I do one. love Leprechaun in space. I still have not seen Leprechaun 3 or Leprechaun in space yet. Dude, so Leprechaun those... 4 is God, so good. Those anyway, are on the watch list. Uh, Leprechaun Two three is, is not pretty bad, great. but it has Caroline Williams in it. So, <laughs> all right, sold. Uh, Sam, you're gonna hate me for this. Going quickly over it. Uh, I finally watched Freaky. It's not for me, and that's fine. Ooh. You're wrong, Casey. <laughs> you're just well, straight least, up wrong. <laughs> at least you've seen it, Casey. <laughs> I still haven't watched it yet. I I totally get it. Casey and I actually talked about it after we watched it. And I I, like, I understand. It's very, um, the high schoolers are very this generation, very over the top. But that's part of the charm of it. I I, I don't know. It's got some good campy fun to it. And I just, I don't know. I dig movies like that. So. Yeah. Just wasn't for me. I I dig Vince Vaughn in it. I I think he's having a (laughs) blast, but that's about it in that movie for me. Uh, I watched Critters for the first time. I had never seen Critters yeah, before. Yeah, Critters yeah. rules. That movie oh, rules. Critters I mean, awesome. That movie's incredible. I watched it right before a movie we'll talk about later, 13 Fanboy, because I'm like, I need to watch some more D. Wallace that I've never seen. And yeah, mm-hmm. she's just like the perfect movie mom and everything. So Critters rules. Yeah, you could say that she's incredible. <laughs> <laughs> Someone uh, kick Sam out of this, please. <laughs> Welcome like, back, oh, Blake. God, I'm back, and I already want to quit. This is this is the <laughs> shit that I. Why did I come back? <laughs> uh, I watched uh, Shivers. I rewatched Shivers actually before we went to Halloween of Palooza. Me and Sam. Uh, yeah, that nice. movie is a, a a a banger of a Cronenberg movie. If you guys haven't watched it, go go see it. Uh, and I watched Sorority Babes in the Slimeball Bullerama for wow. that as well. What did you think? I don't even know if we talked about that. I don't think so. It's uh, pure 80 sleaze. Yeah. Yeah. But it's positive and, ne- and positive <laughs> and negatives of all of that. It is just pure 80s horror sleaze uh, with yeah. Linnea Quigley. And that's fine. That's what that movie is. I love it. I would, I would 100% <laughs> watch it again. <laughs> Huge fan of sleaze. Yeah. So it is. It's it's sleazy as hell. Like I genuinely think you would dig that. You know, uh, <clears throat> Slimeball Bolarama has always been one of those VHS covers that I would see at the the video store because I always loved walking through the horror section, and I was like, oh, this has got to be just one of the best ones ever. And I still haven't watched it yet, so I <laughs> I don't know. I, 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 see, I, need, I need to, since I've started using Shutter a lot more, I, I'd say, I'm pretty sure I saved it on my like my list or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. So. We well, can the VHS out. art is the same thing as the poster art that's on It Shutter. is. It's the same thing. It, it has is. not changed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it lives up to the poster art. Okay, <laughs> okay, yeah. okay. <laughs> Take that which, how you will, but it lives which, up to it. T- to be fair, uh, that doesn't happen often in, in the horror genre. Mm-hmm. So yeah. it's it's zany. It's wild. Like you see a movie with that kind of title, and you're like, "That's got to be like the most ridiculous thing ever." And yeah, yeah, it really is. Like it is mm, the most ridiculous. They, re- thing. they release yeah. an imp from a bowling trophy. <laughs> like <laughs> yeah, I I mean. It has Oscar written all over it. I don't I mean, yeah. I have to check it out. <laughs> uh, I watched Vamp for the first time. Yeah, I love Vamp. I have not seen this. It rules. Mm-hmm. I dug it. What's this? Uh, 
what year is it from? 86, 87? Yeah, okay. later 80s. I'm not going to lie. When I was watching it, I was convinced, convinced that was Cameron Diaz in the movie, even though it's it's not. But I, I the, the girl looks so much like her that I, I was like, they're... Like I was like I was convinced IMDb was wrong, and the, the also love, the credits and yeah 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 the, the love yeah. interest yeah, yeah 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 she has that Cameron Diaz in the mask vibe in this yeah movie sure. absolutely yeah uh, I'm I'm blanking on the actor's name the guy he plays Long Duck Dong in Sixteen Candles which uh, oh John Cryer who, no not John Cryer oh. Not Brian Boyd, not Brian Dennehy. <laughs> I haven't watched Sixteen Candles in a very, very long time. The the Asian. I was just saying, I'm pretty sure he's an Asian dude. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. He's in this movie. Gotcha. He's the the best part. I think he's incredible in this movie. I wish he was in more stuff besides the few '80s movies that he's in. But yeah, it's a fun vampire movie that you didn't get a lot of in the '80s. So this and like Fright Nights, you got the two big ones, I guess. Excuse you. And the Lost Boys, I guess that's fine. The Lost Boys near Whoa. dark. Wait, wait. What about? Well, hold on. Actually, Fright there Night? is there is a lot hold, more. Hold on. When did Fright... vampire movies is like my shit. Hold okay? on. When when did Fright Night Two come out? Because that is legit a great movie. Was that right? Oh God, I don't know. The Impossible to find Fright Night Two. It's Fright... very hard to find. Fright, Fright Night been Two to watch is it. I that movie. Might not be as good as the first one, but boy, it it takes some leaps that are that make me respect it big time. Like it's it's on another level. Nineteen eighty eight. Okay, I need to I need to check that one out. I'd almost rather At watch some it than point. Fight I will it, find it. It's really yeah. It's something else. Yeah. Um. What else do I have? Uh, I watched Scanners for the first time. Oh my god! You had a good month, Casey. It was a definitely a good month. I dig Scanners a lot. Yeah. Uh, I, I knew of that scene where the head obviously blows up, and I was like, yeah, yeah this is 10 minutes into this movie. Cool. What else is going to happen? Is it even that far into the movie? If that. Yeah, you're right. It's it's <laughs> it's like right away in this damn movie, and I'm like... I'm pretty sure I've right. been to that mall they shot at, too, but I, I, don't, I don't know for sure, but... I haven't anyway. seen a lot of Cronenberg. This is one of them that I haven't Ooh. watched. Same, I don't, I I, I'm not sure Cronenberg is your style, but... If you don't I like, like what I've seen of his. Right, I love but, the fly. I liked the dead zone enough. What but, I know is like his least Cronenbergian, but yeah. But like, aren't you, haven't you said that you're not a fan of gore without humor? Depends. Depends okay. on the movie. Um, I, I do like heavy gore and like, but I also like practical effects and gore with a purpose, okay. which I mm-hmm. feel like he does. Yeah. You yeah, know? yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't know what I I love the fly. So if mm. the fly is kind of the barometer for that, like I, I mean, feel like I'll dig some of his other stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. The fly has the most humor of his gore movies, I would say, uh, which is really funny because I don't find that movie very funny. At it's all. not, and it's and it's <laughs> yeah. not, and that's that's what I'm saying. That's it's the not, point. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, that's fine. I, 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 like I said, I love the fly. I know it's considered one of his more accessible ones, but. I feel like I've also grown a lot. You guys have pushed me in some new directions. <laughs> so French Extreme like will I, do that to you. <laughs> yeah, you know, like the further out I get from Martyrs, the uh, the more I feel like I like yeah. it. Yeah. The more I also feel like I don't need to revisit this anytime soon. But I really do appreciate what that movie was trying to do. So, John, if you're listening, like I'm, I'm converted. I do really dig martyrs <laughs> yeah i haven't re- i stand I haven't... by my thoughts on the other two though <laughs> i haven't revisited martyrs since i watched it in like 2009 so don't yeah, feel bad for not making it a priority it's it's a it's, it's a hard movie to watch i mean yeah, it's a hard movie to find too yeah yeah, that yeah too, so. but just get <sighs> itunes casey jesus <laughs> i know Maybe soon. Maybe soon. Uh, I rewatched uh, Green Inferno for the first time since the, ah. the theater. I dug it a lot more this time around. Still not a great it's, it's, movie. It's not, it's not good, you know, but it's, but it's, it's a, fun. It's a fun. Yeah, it's a fun like late night watch if you're... And again, they don't make movies like that anymore. Uh, no. 
But even that movie doesn't really live up to those kinds of movies. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. There's one scene in particular that still just gets me. It's when the uh, the sort of love interest, the uh, black character in the movie, where he's the first one to go on the island. Where I'm like, yeah, that's that's intense. That's yeah. I mean, the guy getting his limbs chopped off and then his head pulled off while alive. That is yeah. That's the worst part. For Pretty me, insane. But, yeah. Yeah. But then you had the weird Eli Roth humor sprinkled, especially towards the end. And I'm like, I just, yeah, yeah that doesn't yeah. work. Like the dude, like mas- you know, ma- masturbating in the corner. And I'm like, what the fuck is this? In in our group chat today, we were talking about knock, knock. I, I was thinking to myself that I really appreciate Eli Roth because he loves the genre. And I can't hate a guy for that. Mm-hmm. Even if I don't like love his movies. So I'll, I'll never like really hate Eli Roth or his movies or anything. I just, I don't think he's a great filmmaker. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. I think he's a better horror enthusiast than he is a better yeah. than than he is a director. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's kind of the same way I feel about Rob Zombie, which is ironic because they like co-host his history of horror show that is on like AMC and Shutter. Yeah, which I really like that because it's a fun little like dive into different movies and subgenres and yeah. things. Yeah, but like, yeah, I, like. Rob Zombie's movies and Rob and like Eli Roth's movies, they never really hit as much. I think they, me. I think they both lean Some into their, yeah. I think they both lean into like their, uh, their their ideology too much when they make their movies. Like Eli yeah. Roth does, like really goes into his thing, and so does so does uh, Rob Zombie. And I think when they both dial it back and make like a, a, their own movie, it, it can be very good, but it doesn't yeah. happen too often. So, mm-hmm. yeah, just my two cents. Yeah, one hundred percent. I mean, I agree with that. I think Zombies' best movie is is uh, Lords of or, yeah, is that Lords of Salem? Yeah, Lords and even, of Salem. And, and, yeah, and yeah. even yeah. that movie gets crazy. You it know, does. But mm-hmm. It still somehow works within the context. It's, it's of, pretty restrained for a Rob Zombie movie. No, I agree. I agree. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, uh, I, I did Lords of Salem, though. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'll go through, like, three more that I know you guys don't have on your list, and then I'll go to you guys. Uh, I rewatched Dead Silence. For the... <laughs> I fucking love that movie. Yeah, watching it this <laughs> first time I watched it was not in love. Uh, this time watching it, now after Malignant, I was like, yeah, I know exactly what you were going for back then. It's just no one caught on to it back then, and everybody's really catching on to Malignant a lot faster, which is which is awesome for Malignant. Uh, I think Dead Silence is starting to get a revitalization, re- reappraisal. Yeah, this movie is a is a banger. Like I think it was just coming this... off Saw, and people were like, "Yeah, we want that James Wan," and he's like, "No, nah, I want to be making a weird, kooky 1970s." 80s ghost story slasher with this twist ending that kind of makes no sense but is incredible <laughs> because it makes the, the entire movie is so cheesy and I dig it. Uh, Even so the uh, time I watched that movie was in a in a friend's basement. Like, God, it was like middle school. I want to say maybe early high school at the very latest. And like, I remember being scared shitless of this movie, mm-hmm. and it still creeps me out if I like watch it at home, at, like by myself at night. Like it'll still creep me out. I I dig this movie the, a lot. I think it's one of James Wan's best. I think it's yeah. really underrated. The shit that got me the first time was uh, Donnie Wahlberg shaving his face the entire time. I'm like, what is this? Why is this weird character quirk in this? And then now I watching it this time, I'm like, so yeah, that's incredible because it's so stupid that he includes it, and that's like, I don't know. It, it's so ridiculous my, that that's in the movie. My favorite shot in the whole thing is still Donnie Wahlberg's death. Where he swings back behind the curtain, he swings back out, and his fucking face is ripped yeah. open. Like you're just like, oh god! And then like the razor oh, goes the off. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, that movie's ridiculous. Uh, I I love it. Please rewatch Dead Silence if you haven't in a while. Um, yeah. These last two, these are these are Blake and Stein picks right here. Strangers Pray at Night. Uh, finally got around to that. I love that movie. Yeah, this it's movie. So good fucking rules uh i like the first one but i think the first one is really that line at the end like that makes the entire movie it's, yeah. oh, it's because you were home it's like yeah that's terrifying i really Everything. like the, the movie as a whole but i think the stuff with live the tyler is 
the dramatic stuff. I'm like, yeah, I don't give a shit. Well, yeah, she's not a great actress or anything, no. but like, I still think there's just there's the like, we can do horror movies mm-hmm. all day where like there's these huge symphonic booms that like emphasize a scare. Or we can have like a movie that sort of just does it without the the music, and yeah. I really appreciate movies like that. Even if I don't think the movies are like mm-hmm. great, like I just like I said, I always appreciate movies swinging for the fences versus uh, movies that just play it safe. Mm-hmm. So yeah, and again, this movie does not play it safe. This, this no, sequel. yeah, this movie yeah. Is, is wild. It's insane, Blake. You talked up the pool scene <laughs> quite so a bit, good. and it is. It's incredible. The entire that, the soundtrack. Oh my God. Is, it's so good, and it, it's so good. This entire movie, I was expecting it to end at certain points every single time. Did like, you? Oh, this this movie's not over. Awesome, keep going. Yes. Did you catch the Christine references in the final chase? Oh, I I, framing, I was got uh, framing the flaming massacre. car coming towards yeah. it. You know, I never and thought about that. When he gets mm-hmm. out, he's got the piece of glass literally stuck in his chest. I'm just like fuck that's so cool like you don't see many like especially slasher movies you just don't see movies referencing christine even though that movie is fucking seminal and so like when i see it it just <laughs> it's all know, right. it fucking warms my heart man i love that movie so much i didn't catch those references i also don't love christine as much as you sam that's, that's I've definitely watched a Christine Sam Lenz probably movie. five times in the last I, year. So. I love Christine. I think it's a great movie. And that's coming from somebody who didn't care much for it like 20 years ago. So, yeah. Fair. Uh, last one I have here um, is one uh, Ghost Watch. Mm. Yeah. Watch that for the first time ever. Uh, thank you, Mr. Andy Heller. I, I forgive your Hocus Pocus comments for letting me borrow your DVD. Uh, what added to this experience of watching Ghost Watch is I sort of told Kayla what the movie was about. That kind of hooked her that it was like, oh, this kind of Blair Witch before Blair Witch. It's a paranormal movie. Uh, she really dug it, which is good. Pre 2000s movies usually aren't her favorite, but uh, luckily she dug this one. And I think part of that goes to our experience watching this is that during the third act, uh, shit starts hitting the fan and things start happening inside the TV studio of the BBC while it's happening inside this house that they're filming in. Uh, and it happened in our house too, that the audio cut out and then the TV just completely shut off. <laughs> and so I sat there for five minutes trying to figure it out and we finally got it back and I rewound it and I'm like, yeah, this is definitely not part of the movie that that, that your audio was supposed to cut out. So <laughs> yeah, having experiences happen while watching this movie adds to the experience, but it's just a, I mean, it's an incredible experience to just watch. It's like a movie like none other, and I'm. It, it's really cool that they could pull it off. Still works almost 30 years later now. Hell yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a legit banger. Mm-hmm. Yeah, cool. the other ones I, I, I know are on at least Sam's and Blake's watch. Okay. List, one, one of them. Cool. So. Cool. I'll I'll burn through some of my lesser ones quick too. <laughs> well, yeah. I got a lot. So <laughs> um, I watched I watched Friday the Thirteenth Part Five. That movie is severely underrated in terms of the rest of the franchise. Mm-hmm. I dig it. It's sleazy. The enchiladas guy is hilarious. Um, it's got some great kills. Uh, I like that they did something different with Jason. So, like, I don't know. I just dig this one. Mm-hmm. Um, I did not the first time around, and I think it was because it was like, oh, Jason's not the killer. Um, it has that I Halloween Halloween it. three effect. Is yeah. this the one where the guy freaks out over a chocolate bar and, and <laughs> yeah. acts as that? Yeah, yeah. Yes, this, yes. Is, <laughs> this one. This is yeah. I, I dig it. It's a banger. Like it's so yeah. fun, and mm-hmm. uh, you know, like yeah. I don't know. I I dig it's this a wild a movie. Lot, so. I, I actually think this would rank in like maybe my top four of the franchise, to be totally honest with you. Mm-hmm. Um, I watched, I, I rewatched Halloween 18 and Halloween Kills. Um, obviously, it was the first time watched this month, but I've seen it multiple times, obviously. Um, uh, yeah, I did both of them. Uh, but did Evil die that night? Evil did not die that night, and I can't yeah. wait for ends. Like, bring on ends, man. I'm so friggin' stoked for it. Uh, I yeah, 
I, I dug kills. I dug kills a little bit more than I even dug Halloween 18. Um, it definitely has its problems, but like, honestly, I, I could overlook just about all of them because the movie was just, it's brutal. It's badass. It's Mikey at his most vicious. And I'm just, I'm all there for it. Um, I rewatched the slumber party massacre before we watched the remake of slumber party massacre. I'm so glad I did that because we'll talk about slumber party massacre later. The remake. Uh, or I can just talk about it now. Let's talk about it now. Yeah. yeah, let's talk about it now. I also watched the Slumber Party Massacre remake on Sci-Fi. Mm-hmm. It's the best slasher of the year, guys. Like I'm not like full stop. I mm-hmm. just yeah, I dig it. Um, and that's not counting Malignant as a slasher because if Malignant was a straight up slasher, it'd be the best movie. But it's not. So it's not a straight up anything. I don't think. <laughs> no, like Malignant is genreless. It's subgenreless. There's nothing categorizing Malignant. So Slumber Party Massacre, yes, is my favorite slasher of the year. Um, it inverts the tropes of a typical slasher and especially like the gender <laughs> politics of the original in such mm-hmm. a crazy way. Mm. That, like I, it's it's heard, essentially oh, sorry, the movie that like the new black Christmas is mm. is like trying to be. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? And it mm. and it does it in a better way. There are moments that it's still kind of like, oh, that's like way on the nose, but the way it's pulled off just has more energy and vibrancy to it than that movie did. So I just, God, I really dug this one. It made me laugh. If you're looking for scares, it doesn't have any, but mm-hmm. it's, it's one of the most fun. You'll, it's like the most fun you'll have at the movies all year. Mm-hmm. I, I loved it. This is going to go in my top 10 horror movies of the year. Like this, this movie. Yes. Yeah. is incredible. Like Sam was saying, it, 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 it like completely takes all those 80 slasher tropes, flips them on their heads so much so that there's a sexy shower scene with a dude. <laughs> And it is incredible. <laughs> pixelates his ass crack. Nice, it does. <laughs> while including <laughs> so much gore in this movie, you and I think that that's got to be on purpose. It is. Yeah. yeah, there's you even references to Slumber like Party Massacre too. Like, yeah, this yeah. movie rules. It's, it's that's incredible. funny. If you like the first two Slumber Party Massacres, I cannot imagine that you're going to come out of mm-hmm. this one not not finding something to love. So, yeah, I loved loved the remake of Slumber Party Massacre when we do our year-end lists. We'll definitely be talking about it. Yeah. Um, I also did a double feature. I re-watched The Craft from 96, and then I w- watched the sequel from last year for the first time. Um, I avoided the sequel for quite some time because I had just heard not great things about it. And I really love the 96 movie, which was only... Um, further strengthened by my rewatch of it. Uh, I really dig that movie. I think uh, Ferruja Bulk is just freaking incredible in that movie. Uh, gives one of the all-time great horror performances. The Craft Legacy is a different movie entirely, where the, the first one, like, breaks the girls apart almost immediately, like, after forming them up and giving them their powers. Like, this one is definitely more about, like, building the coven together. And there's just... I don't know. There's just something about it that really worked for me. Um, I actually teared up at multiple points in this movie. And I legitimately, I don't know. I just love it. Uh, If I would have seen it last year, it would have probably been in my top 10. Uh, Yeah. So love the craft, love the craft legacy. Um, I also rewatched Hubie Halloween. We've talked about (laughs) that so much. It's just an every year watch. It's hilarious. And I love it. Um, I also every year watch It's the Great Pumpkin Charlie Brown. Uh, it's just, yeah. I yeah. just watched that this year with my kids. Yeah, it was great. <laughs> yeah, it's so good. It's it so was good. great. It's like, yeah. Have you, had you, you'd watched it before, right? I mean, probably 30 years ago. Right. Yeah. Yeah. See, with me, like, I've, as soon as I found out that you could get that on DVD, I was like, yes. Mm. And so I've had a copy of it ever since I found, like, I, yeah. I, I love that. So I watch it every year. Um, there's a whole backlot episode on my thoughts on Ghostbusters, but I did also watch Ghostbusters 2, which is fine. It's it's yeah. It's just not as good. It's it's not. 
Um, I know Blake has a different opinion on that. It's my favorite. It's my favorite one of the series. <laughs> I used to be in that same camp as Blake. It, it, that it, I thought it, it was ter- the best, but it terrifies. I mean, I'm not saying it's the best. It's my okay. favorite. Some of it, it, ter- it terrifies me. It terrifies me. Yeah. yeah, it scared me way more than the first movie by far. So. Mm. Well, I didn't see two until I was a little bit older than when I saw one. But when I saw one, it scared the shit out of me. Um, but I also saw one at like age six. So, <laughs> and I was, I was a wiener kid anyways. So, uh, yeah, I, it was fine. It was fine. Um, I like Ghostbusters too. I don't think there's a bad Ghostbusters movie, but I also think the 2016 reboot is actually better than Ghostbusters too. But I also <laughs> ride hard for that one. So I don't care. Um, <laughs> um, on Casey's you, recommendation, I finally watched the reboot of Are You Afraid of the Dark, the first season. I have yeah. the second season, haven't watched it yet, but I really dug the first season. Um, I love the haunted carnival aspect of it. I just think that is something that you need to explore in horror more. Um, it, it gave me heavy um, Something Wicked This Way Comes vibes. And I love something wicked uh-huh. this way comes. So this this series worked for me. Um, I yeah. liked it. I, it was weird. I either wish it was like shortened to a feature length movie, or extended to like an eight episode series. I don't think the pacing was quite like just the three, like what was it, forty five minute episodes? Yeah. It just felt weird in the pacing. That's my mm. only issue with it. Otherwise, I really dug it. I wish we had more kids who are like this. Yeah. Um, yeah. I just started season cool. two uh, of Is it that. Good? Uh, mm, it's fine. It's Is not it as worth good the five dollars I spent on it? <laughs> yes, it's definitely worth five dollars okay. <laughs> to watch. It is also, I think, it's five episodes long, and it feels way too long. By episode three, I'm like, why isn't this over yet? Okay. Like, it get it keeps going too long. It is. I, I like the three episode pacing a little bit better. I would have rather the first season had five episodes though, yeah. but maybe I'll that. feel differently after this. I don't know. I don't know. It just felt like the last episode did so much of the legwork narratively that I was like, Oh God, like I actually wish we were breathing more throughout all of this. This is really cool. I wish there was more time to soak it in, you know, mm-hmm. but um, I don't know if you guys watched either of these. Disney Plus came out with two Halloween specials this year. I watched mm-hmm. the Muppets Haunted Mansion, which I found utterly charming. Um, but I'm also like a massive Gonzo fan. And so this this, this one felt very tailored to me and my tastes. Uh, I, I dug this one a lot. I think it's cute. Um, I think it's a perfect movie to watch with little ones and just the whole family. Uh, and I also watched the Lego Star Wars ter- Terrifying Tales, which starts with a Lost Boys. Damn, reference. there's a Lost Boys Lego there's Star Wars literally now. a Lost Boys Lego Star Wars. And it was like, as with soon as Kylo started, Ren as, I was like, as, uh, you're kidding. What's, what's the main character's as, uh, name in, in Lost Boys? Uh, Michael. 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 And yeah, Kylo Ren like, gets yeah. to Michael. Yeah. It's amazing. It is. It's really funny. It's like it's genuinely a clever, a clever take on the Lost Boys plot through a Star Wars filter, and I just mm-hmm. I really dug it. Hmm. So, um, I also watched, I rewatched Seed of Chucky for the first time since middle school. It's one of the best of the franchise. I don't care what anybody says. I absolutely love Seed that- of Chucky. That's a pretty stellar franchise. Like, the, there's yeah, not a bad is. movie in that series. That there's one not. I need to rewatch because I feel it in that franchise has the Halloween 3, Friday the 13th, Part 5 syndrome of it's just kind of the outcast. It's, it's and I think now, now watching yeah. the new Chucky series, I'm going to dig Seed of Chucky a lot more. Yeah. Uh, I, I really like it. I. I have theories about the new Chucky series, which Casey and I have also been watching. Um, Blake, have you caught any of it yet? I, I have not. No. no. Okay, it's it's good. You I have caught really the new season out. of Peppa Pig. If you were talking about that, but... <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that's great. Um, My daughter yeah, loves so that. That's I, all yeah. that matters. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah. What so else you got? Seed is incredible. Oh, um, yeah, I, did, I, I also watched the new Patrick Bryce Netflix movie, There's Someone Inside Your House. Okay. It's fun. Mm-hmm. It's fine. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a little forgettable. It doesn't have the magic that his two Creep movies do. Like, because Creep for me and Creep 2 are both just stellar. Like, there's something about those that just you feel like you're watching something special. And this mm-hmm. just felt a little bit more generic. Um, not quite as, not quite as innovative as those. Um, and it's not necessarily a bad thing, but it just wasn't anything super memorable. Um, and then I also watched Hellboy 2019, which. Hell yeah. Like, honest to God, I kind of liked <laughs> It's it's not as good as the uh, the Del Toro ones at all, no. but it's not really trying to be. Uh, it tries to fit like five different graphic novel plots into one movie, and you know by the end of it, you're just kind of like, okay, fine, this is what it is. And he's flying around, and London's on fire, and he's got Excalibur, and he's on a dragon. You're just like, okay, sure. Sure, and then like it just wraps up really abruptly. But <laughs> <laughs> also, I, I gore <laughs> has yeah. a lot of gore, oh, in it, which gore I like. Galore. Yeah, I love the wild hunt sequence with the giants. I think that's incredible. Like, there's yeah, there's I, some really fun moments in this. One. I also I, I really like David Harbour as Hellboy. I'll be honest. Yeah, so I did too. I he's definitely doing something different than Pearl, yeah. which I appreciate. It's not a good movie, and, but uh, I like it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's how I would describe it. Like I, I recommend it because like it is fun, but it's definitely not quality. <laughs> no. Um, yeah, and then I don't know. I I also watch Midnight Mass, Mike Flanagan's latest series, twice on Netflix. Wow. Uh, I literally put in work and watched 14 hours of it um, because, you know, seven one way, seven back. Uh, It's my favorite thing he's done. It's maybe my favorite thing out of uh, maybe my favorite horror thing to come out of the last decade, to be honest with you. Um, And I know I, I like I've talked a little bit about like religious experience growing up and everything. This one is very, very much like religious horror. Um, Hmm. I won't spoil the subgenre just in case people haven't because like i went into this as blind as possible and it paid off uh holy crap this thing is just like a revelation um i get where people come from when they say it's a little too talky there's too many monologues like i understand maybe how that wouldn't be to everybody's taste but it worked for me um every performance in this is killer uh the writing is incredible it's like episode four or five. It takes a narrative turn that I was not expecting that could have completely derailed the show. And it doesn't, it actually Hmm. makes it stronger. Like I, Oh God, I really dug this series. And as soon as I got done watching it, I texted Maria who was out of town the weekend that it dropped. And I was like, it's okay. I'm going to want to watch this again, like right away. And so she got (laughs) back and about a week later, I re binged it with her. (laughs) So yeah, I definitely Shit. recommend the Night Mass. It's hmm. it's incredible. I uh, I got I got to catch too. that in Bly Manor yet. I'm I'm behind in my uh, Flanag- Flanagan TV universe. Yeah, right me now. too. Me too. I love Bly Manor. It's not as strong as Hill House, but once you get to the final episode, like what they're trying to do with Bly Manor hits and it's like, "Oh god. Oh god, I'm so emotional." Do you like, like Midnight was, Mass? Do you think Midnight Mass is better than uh, Hill House? Yes. Okay. I it's... genuinely do. Like yeah, I, Hill, Hill House is one of my favorite horror things of the last ten years. So I was okay. saying very similar things about Hill House a few years back, and now I'm watching Midnight Mass, and I'm like, no, this is he somehow managed for me, anyways. He has managed to top Hill House. I genuinely find Midnight Mass just mm. okay. utterly riveting. Utterly riveting. I love it. Right. Um, well, once we finish yeah. watching the new season of Big Mouth, we're putting Mid- Midnight Mass on then. Yeah. It's it's so good, dude. You're going to dig it. And I know we did a whole Patreon episode on this, but I also just wanted to give a shout out to my, my, home, my home movie, Soho, Last Night in Soho by Edgar Wright. Uh, my best friend Edgar Wright, 
be like a bunch of my tweets because I was like, I was thirst tweeting this movie. Like this movie is incredible. I love it. Casey thought it was okay. You can watch our Patreon for full thoughts, but it's still in Sioux Falls for one week. I don't know when this drops, but if it's still in theaters, when you're wa- listening to this, stop listening to this at this point. Check the show times. Book your ticket. Please watch this on the big screen. It's so deserving. I love it. Um, it's another one we will be talking about in our year-end lists. <laughs> wow. Please finish listening to this episode. Watch it some other time. Sure. That too. <laughs> oh, yeah. And it's coming home. So if you're not in like a theater-safe area, like I know there are some people that mm-hmm. literally – like are not feeling safe going to the theater. Apparently a week from tomorrow, it will be available on paid VOD. So Perfect. I, can't, I cannot wait to hear Blake's thoughts on this. I seriously can't. <laughs> I can't well, go either way, honestly, uh-huh. like, I feel like Blake, you're going to love this movie or you're going to uh, fucking what, what would you compare it to? <laughs> what, what would you compare it to in his canon already? Nothing. Nothing. Really, it's uh-huh. it's literally unlike anything. Is it? There's is it? There's is not it, a single light moment in this movie. Is it's there heavy like as shit? Is the editing like really choppy and quick and no. like no. like he usually does? Actually, okay, because okay. I takes I absolutely a lot of it. cannot stand his editing in his movies. Like it drives oh. me crazy. Then I think you're so. gonna dig this because it's okay. very. It's not. There are some moments where you see it, but it's. Right, 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 right. It's right. a lot uh, of long, yeah. I uh, I'm excited to see it. Takes that I dig it. Yeah, yeah I'm excited. Yeah. I'm excited to see it, but I'm definitely not going to go see it in the theater. So, yeah, understandable. Mm-hmm. I'm going to try and make it before it leaves theaters again. <laughs> but <laughs> Wait, is that um, it? Yeah. So, oh, that's sorry. that's it for me because I know, I know Casey. One of the things you saw at the state, I didn't see at the state, but I watched it at home. So. Okay. Yeah. That's the last thing on my list. All right. We'll put on the Ritz later then. <laughs> um, okay. So I have oh, yeah. a lot here. Uh, the first one I watched <laughs> was uh, a movie. It's horror adjacent, not quite horror, but it's pretty horrific. It's called Super Dark Times. Um, it's I've heard a, of this one. It's mm-hmm. a like, teen, more like a teen drama um, about these kids who are just hanging out. They're kind of on the edge of like, you know, uh, they're not, they're not, they're not like, um, uh, popular in school. And, uh, one day they're playing with someone's sword. They end up killing somebody accidentally, complete accident. And they decide instead of telling somebody about it, they're just going to hide it. And then they have to live with the consequences. And it sort of just becomes like this, uh, this really, really heavy drama about, uh, like, sh- like, uh, like the guilt weighing on them. And the reason I bring it up is because it, it is a, it's, it's, it's filmed <laughs> like a horror movie, but it's not that. I mean, it doesn't go into any supernatural things or any, any elements like that. But uh, it's worth mentioning because it might be like one of the best debut films, like, in in, in a decade. It's so well done. Um, if if Criterion put this out, I'd be like, yes, it's worthy. It's mm. it's just so well made. Um, what did you watch it on? Uh, Hulu, I think. I was about to say, I think it's on Hulu. It, it, okay. And it was on Netflix for the longest time too. Um, mm-hmm. It's it's excellent. I, I cannot recommend it enough. It goes into some. I keep seeing very, it. I'm scrolling through one of them. So yeah, I have to check it out. It goes through some very very uh, very dark moments, uh, especially if you're a parent. Um, the next it came one I watched out around the time that like summer of eighty four did too. Would you say it's kind of comparable to that? Uh, it's way better than that piece of shit movie. <laughs> Good, because like that movie, that movie gets like it starts off promising and then goes off the rails. I, yeah. you know, Sam, did you like summer of eighty four? I liked it up until a point. Did, so there's a great movie that came out the same year called The Clove Hitch Killer. That is the same kind of thing. I wanted to see that. Yeah. That is an excellent movie. I would okay. recommend that one. Um, okay. Apologies to the Summer of 84 fans for calling the movie a piece of shit. Um, the next one I watched was called Candisha. This is on Shutter, I think. Uh, yeah. It's by the guys who made Inside. And 
This movie was awful. Um, well, so was Inside, so what did you expect? <laughs> um, <laughs> Sam. Sam, 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 Sam. Anyway, this movie was terrible. Uh, the great, the best thing about it was that the monster kept changing and getting bigger and bigger, and it just, like, killed people. Uh, it was sort of like it uh, didn't hold back on who it killed, and, like, there's no, like, some of the kills it didn't really build up to, they just... The monster disappeared and started eating people. I thought that was pretty great. Otherwise, the movie was really, really bad. Um, I watched another. Um, I watched another Shutter original. I think called Blood Vessel. Uh, good God, oh. this movie is so boring. Oh. Like uh, that's the one I recommended too. Oh, no. I'm sorry. I no. was so bored. Uh, okay, so idea. I really have to watch this so I can be the tiebreaker. <laughs> oh, gr- I thought it was a great idea. Uh, I was just, like I said, I, it's like every, like, I'm like, surely a half hour has passed and it's been like five minutes and it's just, I just, was one so of those boring. movies I'm where sorry. you kept hitting no. the down button on your I'm sorry. You I just, I time. was so bored with it. I, I can get that. Um, uh, I watched Lava Lanchula, which was incredible. Yeah. Have um, you watched two Lava? Two Lava. Two Lava. Two Lava. Oh. I'm not watching. I know. You got to check that one out, man. It's I know. I know. So so many movies, so little time. Uh, <laughs> I so I haven't got to talk about Malignant yet. Um, you guys know I loved it. Um, <laughs> yeah. Pretty insane movie. I was the only person in my theater, and therefore I decided to be very audible with my reactions to mm-hmm. it. I yelled "Holy shit!" at one point. I wish there was somebody else in there, but alas, there was not. Uh, I loved it. Loved the, tw- the the way it goes. I love, like, if you go into this thinking that this movie was not done on purpose, I think you just got it wrong. I'm sorry. Like, I think James Wan is too smart of a filmmaker to, like, <laughs> get get all of this wrong. Mm-hmm. Anyway. Uh, it's like talking... people that were sharing the Cruella opening scene where mom gets kicked over a cliff by Dalmatians. And they're like, this movie's terrible. It's like, you realize like the whole movie is kind of just like cheesy and camp. Terrible. Like, that's, oh, that's, yeah. that's what they're going for. Um, yeah, Casey, you're wrong on that one too. <laughs> are, are we doing everything we watch at the state at once or are we doing sort of like just the yeah. month of October? We'll do this. Well, yeah, we'll do the state's October, I guess. Okay. So I, I went to the Tremor screening. A lot of fun. It's a great movie. Yeah. yeah. Went to the Lost Boys. Uh, ditto. I was great to hear Cry Little Sister. Mm-hmm. On the screen, Jason Patrick is so fucking hot. Like, good lord, he is. Um, him and Kiefer. Geez. I just, I wanted to. No offense, I could take or leave like, Kiefer, but Jason put Patrick. My face man, in between man. them. It's the beach blonde hair for Kiefer that I'm like. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, that's I, that's that's hot as shit. Oh, that's uh-huh. what I mean. I'm like, oh, oh yeah. yeah, okay. Oh, <laughs> I was like, yeah. I just kept thinking that he had bad breath the entire time. I don't know why. Um, Probably does. I watched uh, the, I watched the new Candyman. Yeah. Uh, loved it. Thought it was great. Yeah. Um, so good. I'm a, you know I'm a little kind of just sick and tired of um, movies using like a political stance as its plot device. However, I'll give this one a pass because it came out before what happened last year. So mm-hmm. I'm and it's it's done pretty well. And the fact that like they sort of nailed the ending down. Like before everything kind of happened last year, I kind of give it points on that too. Mm-hmm. Um, also, I'm convinced at the end they only say Candyman four times and then he appears, but whatever, I'm not going to fault it for that. Also, we get Tony Todd. I yes. love Tony Todd, uh, mm-hmm. even if only for five seconds. Uh, what an op- impactful fucking five <laughs> yeah. seconds, though. The, yeah. the, the opening scene of this where the kid is doing laundry terrified me. I thought that was yeah. so well done. The scene where they slowly zoom out of that apartment where the kid's getting <laughs> killed. Thought that was incredible. Uh, yeah, really well done. I really, really enjoyed it. Um, is this the photography on, on the kills is insane. Um, I want to say you can buy it on digital now. Which yeah, means yeah. Blu-ray's not that far off. Yeah, yeah. I'm definitely picking that Blu-ray up as soon as it comes out. Um, I've thought about just buying it for 20 bucks on Voodoo to be yeah, honest. I want the special features for this one, though. Candyman, yeah, I'll definitely fair. watch in, like, five years. It's it's really good. Um, <laughs> I got directed to this movie called Delirium. Um, this is by Liberto Bava. It came out in, like, 87, 88. Guys, this is the horniest movie I've ever seen in my life. Um, 
This movie opens, not even kidding, the opening shot is like a woman coming coming out of a pool and it's just like her bare breasts. Um it's a <laughs> you guys are So on a scale of one to Julie Bowen and Hubie Halloween. What are we oh, talking about? It's, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. It's 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 Julie Bowen. So like <laughs> so it's so this movie's about this former hooker who now runs this fashion magazine. And most of it okay. takes place at her house, and it's just like really swanky place, like utterly disgustingly swanky. And they're doing like these photo shoots, and the the funniest thing is like this lady has this neighbor who's in who's in a wheelchair, and he has like this pool table and like heads of animals around the whole thing on the wall, and he's he'll call this woman up, and he'll be like. I'm totally masturbating to you right now. What do you think about that? And she's, and this is the movie type movie that she's just like, oh, you, you're so silly. This would not fly today at all. This movie would <laughs> be canceled so quickly. <laughs> but it's like, it's, it's constant nudity, constant like sweaty people. Um, when it gets to like the kill sequences, they're amazing. The first one, um, and if you look up photos of this movie, there's this weird photo of this woman where her entire face is an eyeball with like red veins going across her face and everything. And it never explains why it happens. Like <laughs> it, 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 it goes to night and then all of a sudden like this huge red fluorescent light just lights up the whole pool yard. It's kind of like Suspiria, this really dark primary red and it's just downpouring like just totally fake movie downpouring and she's walking around and then you see her face and then she turns and then she turns back and her entire face is just this giant eyeball it's the craziest <laughs> thing ever and then one person gets killed by like get, getting locked in a room with bees and the killer's all of a sudden wearing a beekeeper suit i don't know what's going on <laughs> this movie is crazy um yes uh, I need to see this. There's a sequence where <laughs> the maid lady is like in a in a um, uh, a sauna, and this guy just walks in and like he takes her clothes off, and he just starts like rubbing her down, like getting her to have sex. It's cr- this movie would not exist today. It's it is utterly insane. Um, I just feel like Lamberto Bava is kind of my filmmaker. I don't know, but uh, it might be a movie night, night where we put it on and watch it, and you guys just are like. What in God's name? Because it's it's wild. It's it's just freaking crazy. So, uh, highly recommend that one. <laughs> what, what, what'd you watch that on, Blake? Uh, <laughs> we'll talk about it after the show. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, 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 I <laughs> you watched it on Skinamax late. I night. did not watch it on Skinamax. I I got it from a a, a less than. Uh, uh, a less than viable place to get movies from. Okay. Uh, I, I'm a part of a group that shares like hard to find movies, and someone put it on there. I, I watched it on there. It's and uh, I don't regret it because it was crazy. Um, I watched. Blake, we're being recorded right now, so I don't want you to send me an invitation to that group. <laughs> I, I might have to do some work. We'll see about that. Uh, I watched. <laughs> I watched. Uh, however you want to say it, tea time. Uh, Titan. Um, this was okay. I need to rewatch it. A lot of things are going on in this movie, but this really pays a lot of a lot of respect to like the David Cronenberg body horror movies. Um, a woman kind of has sex with a car in it. It's pretty crazy. Um, <laughs> all right, I watched Old, the M Night Shyamalan movie. Uh, yeah, this movie rules. I don't get the big yeah. deal about this. Uh, I thought it was a lot of fun. Um, Invisible it's Man. Fine. <laughs> Invisible Man, that guy is crazy. He's kind of an asshole. Um, mm-hmm. Bride of Frankenstein, loved it. VHS ninety four. You're talking oh, the original Invisible Man, right? Yes, he's an asshole. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mm-hmm. love that one. It's one of my favorite Universal monster ones. Yeah. Also, I love I love it when they call the police and they're like, "There's an Invisible Man up there," and they're kind of like, "They're like, gee golly, come on, like, what are you talking about?" <laughs> and then and then. And then the guy runs up there, and then he comes back down, and he goes, surely there's an invisible man up there. And so I thought that was really funny. Um, yeah. But, yeah, it was a really good movie. He, he derails a train, which is incredibly maniacal. Um, yeah. And the My end- favorite is his laugh when he pushes the car. Over the edge of the yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. He Love probably it. has the highest kill count of any, like, horror villain because of that train. Oh, I think murders- Jason crushes him, but you're, you, might, you might not be far off. Jason never derailed the train, though. That's true. 
That's true. Yeah. He would have, though, if he could have. He would have. And to be fair, he had a chance to sink a boat, and he did not sink mm-hmm. a boat. So um, VHS 94 was a lot of fun. I, I don't mm-hmm. really think it's good, but I, I, I just love – I've, I've realized that I love horror anthologies, no matter how bad they are. I just I love the idea of getting short horror movies, like kind of like curated for me in a, in a pack. Mm-hmm. And even though I didn't like love all of them, um, <clears throat> I, I really enjoyed it. Terror is my favorite, but also Hail Ratma. Um, which, which one is Terror again? Terror is the final one. Okay. Yeah. My, mine I was. I uh, am still in the camp of not having seen any of these, and I know I need to get oh, on that. Oh, it yeah, is you need to watch them. Oh yeah, you need yeah. to get on that. I watched. Um, I watched ninety four too. My favorite's the one that takes place in the funeral home. Oh really? Yeah. Okay. I don't know that one. Just, okay. Just, and just, that is it. also why I like these because everyone seems to have a different favorite one. So yeah. that is cool. I watched Body Parts. Um, yeah. It's. Have you seen this? Mm-hmm. Oh, man. this. Mo- oh my god. Okay. This movie pretty incredible um i wouldn't give it higher than a three and a half stars or anything but like there's some shit in this there is a shot there's a scene in this movie where sam have you seen this movie i haven't no okay so this basically this guy gets in an accident and on this like it gets in a car accident gets taken to the hospital and um they need to like remove his arm and they 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 um they're like oh by the way we can get you a new one and so they get him a new one, but you find out that it's like this serial killer that's being put to death. And um, so he gets this arm. And then a few weeks later, when he's out of the hospital, the arm starts to like take over his movements of his body and do whatever it wants. And then like you slowly realize that other people have gotten his, his other, his legs and his other arm. <laughs> and then there's, then there's a scene that I did not see coming. It's called gonna, body parts. It's called body parts. Oh, okay. Okay. That's why I was like, I thought you said body bags. Oh, body bags is great too, but body, body bags, parts. I've never seen this. Okay, so yeah, and there, there's a scene that I'm not going to reveal what happens because I did not see it coming, and there is one of the great ever action set pieces in a horror movie involving two cars and handcuffs, and that's all I'm going to say. And then there's a shot that I wish, or there's a scene I wish we could talk about. Uh, that is complete spoilers. I can't talk about it until you guys see it. It's, I thought it was amazing the way they, they, the way they filmed it, the, what, what it means in terms of the story. Uh, I thought it was incredible. Uh, what did you watch I, this on? Or is this uh, another super secret one? I think I rented it from somewhere. I don't mm. remember. I mean, I watched okay. so much lately. Um, I watched God Told Me To by Larry Cohen. Um, so basically, um, this, uh, the movie opens with this guy just starting shooting people in New York with a sniper rifle. And when the cops confront him, he just says, God told me to. And then it turns out he finds out more people who are committing these crimes and their excuse is always God, God told me to. And then you find out that there's this cult leader who is telling these people to do this stuff. And then, he, and then there, like there's a, there's a twist on him that I'm not going to reveal because then it goes into a completely different genre and it goes crazy. Um, I thought it was really so good. He's the of... devil, isn't it? I'm not, I'm not going <laughs> to say a word. Uh, I watched The Night House. Have you guys seen The Night House? The Night no, House. but I want to. It's the Rebecca Hall That's one, right? Rebecca yes. Hall, right? Okay. Yes. I haven't this, yet. This is an incredible movie. This, oh my God. It's so good. Rebecca Hall, like, if, if Rebecca Hall doesn't nail it, the movie does not exist at all. It does not work. This is like, for me, this is, this is like uh, what's her name, Tony Collette, hereditary level of performance. Ooh. Like this is, so basically, this woman's husband just commits suicide, and she's in this house alone, and all of a sudden, weird things start happening to her, and you find out that like he is still around as a ghost, and that's not a spoiler because it's sort of like what she discovers and what the ghost is trying to do to her is what the is where it gets really really good and uh there is one scare in this that like it, there's a sequence where it just it's sort of like on purpose lulls you to sleep and i mean that in a good way i don't mean i don't mean that in a bad way like you're sort of like you're, you're sort of droning out mentally because it's a it's a slow scene it gets quieter and quieter and it has like just one of the <laughs> this one of the biggest scares of the year um really love this a lot I think David Bruckner did it, 
and mm-hmm. it makes me really psyched for the Hellraiser movie he's working on. Yeah. Um, I watched Cat People at the State Theater. That was okay. Um, has some really good, terrifying sequences in it, surrounded by a lot of like just boringness. Uh, I watched Halloween Kills. I liked it a lot, surprisingly. Um, there's some stuff that's really, really bad in this. Um, I'm thinking mainly of the hospital sequence where they just chase some random dude throughout, which makes zero sense. Um, yeah. However, uh, the sequence where Michael walks out of the burning house with the rain, with, with the water falling down, is worth the price of admission alone. I think that is just one of the great horror shots, sequences, scenes of, I don't know, 15, 20 years. It's incredible. Um, it's fucking dope. But the ending is awful, and so is that <laughs> hospital sequence. Um, uh, I beg to differ on the ending. I'll give you the hospital sequence, but the ending fucks. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I rewatched VHS two. Um, this is this movie's fine. Uh, it's it's just it's really. I think it's, I think its notoriety is, is is just so outlived by how good Safe Haven is as a singular sequence. I think I think the the first one is the first movie is fine with what's his name uh, the director. Um, who's the director that stars in the first one? He directed the guest, um, Adam Wingard. Adam oh, Wingard, 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 yeah, yeah. yeah um, it, it's good. The zombie GoPro is fine. That it's one's the, fun. It, it's the weakest for me. Yeah. Uh, and then the alien invasion one's a lot of fun too. But for mm-hmm. me, Safe Haven is just. I mean, I I just think it's one of the most unique horror experiences ever created on like it's just so original, so much fun, so bonkers, so gonzo, so violent, so disgusting. Um, and it just all works for me. Um. I watched Black Sabbath on Shudder. Uh, incredible opening sequence. I loved that like single area, uh, single location mm-hmm. uh, thing. And I, 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 I totally guessed that twist. Casey, I know you're talking. About, I, I know you know what I'm talking about uh-huh. um, on the phone. Um, I thought that was a lot of fun. The middle sequence is so fucking boring. Um, it's and it's like three hours long. I just. <laughs> It's so bad. It's so dull. I don't care. Thankfully, it's saved by an absolutely all timer short. The the lady who goes to the, the who has to go. What is she again? Is she like a um, what was she, Casey? She's a uh, is she like a a mystical person who can like or what is she doing? I'm trying she to go, remember. Some some lady's either dying or has died, and she has to go. I think she had already passed. Yeah, and uh, I watched this alone, and it was legit uh-huh. scared in my house. And I was not alone. I was legit scared. This sequence is terrifying. Mm-hmm. Um, oh my god, I Sam, just, you need to watch. You need to watch this movie. This movie movie's incredible. I feel You're, like I and, need to. And Sam will dig the second act too. Yeah, you you probably will. It's a little too long for me, but man, that third sex sequence mm-hmm. was just Whoops. oh my god! I <laughs> this it was almost like a Blake go up and, and shut, turn the lights on because it was it was terrifying. Yeah, um, I, like I watched don't like that. Yeah, I watched Don't Breathe Two, which is not really a horror movie, I guess, but yeah. more of like <laughs> oh, a, it is. It more is. of a more of a it's trashy. Awesome. Yeah, no, I'm not. Yeah, I'm not saying it's not. Mm-hmm. It's sort of like yeah, it's. It sort of leans less into horror than the first one did. Mm-hmm. I had a lot of fun. This movie is disgusting. It's awful. I can't believe I'm cheering for some guy who like would ram cum <laughs> into people. Um, but I did. I, yeah. I thought it was great. Um, a little too hard on this daughter, but I don't know. They do an excellent <laughs> job of making the villains in that movie even more no, sleazy. I know. <laughs> Dude, when, 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 when the parents were like, we're going to cut you open and take your liver, I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> I was like, oh, my God. Uh, so, yeah, I had a lot of fun with that. Um, I watched A Quiet Place Part 2. You guys know me. I don't like this series. It's just not yeah. for me. Um, it's fine. <laughs> I, I still need to watch it. I don't know. I, I rewatched. I, I dug it, but I get it, man. I get it. <laughs> I, it's it's you know, I, I you know I'm I'm generally okay with using children, and 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 you know infants as like a tactic to make the audience care. This just felt over. This this felt it went too far for me. Uh, I felt like using the baby. Losing oxygen, I, I just could not handle it. I could not. I think if I maybe if I watched it when I didn't have an infant 
kid, I would be okay. But I, I was, I, I was kind of offended by it, but whatever. I'll let it go. Um, I watched them at the state theater. I grew up with this movie. My dad loved this movie. It's just, it's just, it's just my jam. I love giant ant movies. It's probably the only one, but I loved it. Um, I'm so jealous that you, are you talking them? <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. 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 I, yeah, got, yeah, I cut yeah. out. No, it's yeah, okay. Yeah. I, I watched them. them. Yeah. It's great. Uh, I, I finally watched the WNUF Halloween special. Um, I, I'm really split on this movie. Like I really enjoyed Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of what this movie did. I love the mattress commercial. I really love the mattress commercial in this. Uh, ultimately, the the actual like story of the house didn't go anywhere, and I was really, I was really disappointed that it didn't try harder at that. But maybe it was just trying harder at the aesthetic of watching like a '80s Saturday night like spookathon. Mm-hmm. Um, having said that, I really enjoyed. <laughs> The reporter. I love that he was kind of an asshole to people. Um, uh, yeah. Really dug him a lot. There, there was some sequences where I was generally like kind of scared, um, but uh, like ultimately I sort of let down that it was just like some punk kids, kind of like I don't know, killing. Yeah. I don't know. I just didn't. I, that, that's how I feel about it too. I think. But the, but but I, 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 I the experience I re- is, is the best. I part really of appreciate it. the the um, amount of detail that went into this. Have you seen WNUF? Halloween special. I have Sam? not watched this one yet. I, I, it's, it it's was on, it's, on my watch list this season, but I haven't. I just it's on Shutter. You it. have to wait now to Halloween. Mm-hmm. You cannot watch it yeah. now until next October. Um, okay. It's not it's, even it's, April when I just do nope, like a nope, mini Halloween. Nope, nope, no, 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 no. <laughs> the, 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 I'm sorry. The leaves got to be on the ground for this one. Um, okay. Yeah. Uh, Creature from the Black Lagoon. Another one my dad loved as a as a kid. Showed me as a kid. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's it's. I don't think it's great, but I, I'm giving it five stars because I love it. Um, I rewatched Suspiria. Uh, I mean, I, I could wax Which poetic. One? The original. I, I I could I could wax poetic about this movie forever, so I'm not going to talk about it any much longer. I just I love it. Um, and that was the last horror movie that I watched was Suspiria. Sweet. Nice. Uh, guys, I looked up Delirium. You can buy the Blu-ray on Amazon for $18. So. Okay. Highly, highly. Re- I mean, this is like, get three beers in your or system. Or Blake can just message us an invite to a super <laughs> secret group. <laughs> I will I will definitely uh, try and hook you guys up with, uh, with a little. Um, You're going to e- either need the super secret group or a, a DVD or Blu ray because that is the only way to watch. Delirium. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll see if I can get you guys you... Uh, a file of it. Um, or, I mean, <laughs> I tell you what, I feel like I've built it up so much that I need to buy it and then you guys can borrow it because this <laughs> is this is a theater room movie, my friends. Okay. This is. This is Ooh, I'm, I'm down. Yeah. You guys are. Here's, here's what I'll say. You're either you're either into horniness or you're not because this movie there's it's it's you're in or you're out. That's all I'm saying. So, so we'll do a delirium and sorority babes in the slime ball bowl around my double feature. <laughs> yeah, I'm in. there you go. I'm Let's in. <laughs> I'm done. I that's that's, that's everything. Yeah. All right. Should we all get right. into our state theater uh, watches then? Yeah. Oh yeah. I'll let okay. you start this. We, oh, yeah, are we ahead. talking about the beta test? Are you guys talking about that? I haven't seen it, so not I would horror enough. Let's not. Oh, talk you haven't seen it yet. I haven't seen it. No. Okay. I don't. Nope. Yeah, it's not a it's horror not really, movie. It's not really horror. I didn't it's know like it was psychological thriller, yeah. kind of. But like, I don't know. Yeah, it, I was just, I was just curious as to what. No, yeah, not to be that guy, but I prefer not. we not talk about it. Um, yeah. Until I see it. Yeah. Sorry. No. <laughs> it's not horror enough anyways. So we'll okay. talk about it. we'll talk about it privately. Sorry, listeners. Yeah. S- suck it. Uh love you, Jim. Uh guys, let's talk about the first one. I know all of us watched. House. House. Uh, Blake, had you seen this before? Nope. Okay. Nope. So the first time watch for all of us then. All right. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, I, did you guys have any expectations going into the movie at all? I didn't know <laughs> what the fuck this movie was until about a week before we aired it or before it played. I thought it was the 86 house. 
And then I realized it was from 77. And I'm like, oh, that's not the 86 house, obviously, because it came out in 77. And I'm like, oh, it's Japanese. And I'm like, oh, okay, I really don't know what the fuck this movie is then. And so I just went, as we all did. And I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I was wild. It kind of blew Mm -hmm. my mind, to be honest with you. I Um, knew of it. A floating head jumps out of a jumps out of a well and bites a girl <laughs> in the butt and i'm like any movie that that happens in i'm 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 bought mm-hmm. in man like there's <laughs> yeah i'm that's all i need that's all i need like a floating head biting people in the ass I, for no I, I, reason like never I'd happens s- again in the rest of the movie i'd seen the image of the girl with uh like the blue background behind her and where it's like just her head. I had seen that image, and that's like all I knew about this movie. And so I had no idea. Like I, I didn't know if this was like. Obviously, I knew it was a cult movie. I didn't know if I was actually supposed to be like, oh, this is actually a scary movie from you know nineteen seventy. Would you say seventy seven? Well, 77, I think that's what yeah. it is. Yeah. yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I didn't know what to expect, and then when shit starts happening in this movie, I was sitting right next to Andy. And when he started laughing, I'm like, "All right, this is this is the movie." I'm like, "Okay, that's the tone." If Andy's laughing along with this, that then, then I know it's like, "Okay, yeah, it is supposed to be this rig- ridiculously bonkers, crazy ass movie." I mean, I felt that that was pretty apparent right away when when the guy was like, "This is my new wife. She can kind of cook." <laughs> yeah, you know, like everything in this movie, like the dialogue at the beginning, I'm like. Wait, what? What? Mm-hmm. And I like, yeah. I was like, I can't tell if this is just bad translating on the subtitles <laughs> or if they're really just saying this. And pretty soon I was like, no, this is just the actual dialogue. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. This movie is just that out there. And I just, oh my God. Uh, yeah. The, the, the biting on the butt, the fucking piano that eats the girl, yeah. like that sequence. That sequence blew my mind, man. Like, I don't even know. Like, it just, it was one of those movies that, like, weirdly inspired me. I was like, there's no reason that you can't make something just with, like, no money. Because, like, what what just happened? What was that? How did they do this piano thing? Like, it doesn't look high budget. It looks like they just used what they could and made something incredible. And, like, I was just like, there's no excuse. I have to go make a piano eat a schoolgirl. Like, please do that. Mm-hmm. God, I just, I just love this movie. And I was not expecting to, to be totally honest. I was like, I saw that it was a Criterion release. And I'm like, no offense, Blake. I know the Criterion breaks like your thing and everything. Um, I like my movies a little bit on the uh, sleazier side. So I was, I was happy that this, like, this kind of bucked my expectations for what a Criterion movie could be because, like, it was fun. It was a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. I dug it. Yeah, this is this is one of the movies I've had the most fun watching at the State Theater, and the crowd was was they they got yeah. into it eventually. I think again, that well, I don't think they did. Crowd. That's what I it was took some of them. About. It took some of them a bit to get into it, though. Hmm. I felt like it was just a completely dead screening. Hmm. But Maybe it was because I was, I was paying laughing, attention to I was our row. Front. Oh. I was laughing my ass off. I don't care yeah. how loud I was. It was. I mm-hmm. thought it was hilarious. Uh, yeah, I, I believe this was the biggest selling late night of the month. Wow, was it? Yeah, I'm pretty That's sure. Crazy. I'm pretty sure. Well, Had, like, like a hundred people. Was, mm-hmm. I remember like Stephen asking like who'd seen it. And like very few people raised their hand. I think we had a lot of newbies in this crowd that didn't mm-hmm. know what to expect. Yeah. Well, I and I, I I'm pretty sure he even asked who even knows what it's about, and like only twenty people yeah. probably raised their hand. So mm-hmm. I knew yeah. nothing. The most I knew about it was literally from the little blurbs that they put up at the beginning of the movie that was before fun. they started mm-hmm. it. Yeah, that was yeah, fun. and it was it was so much fun. So yeah, that was a good I, I that was that was a uh, that was a fun late night. I would yeah. rank that pretty high on my late night experiences at the state. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. That and the Warriors are 
probably my two favorites I've seen lately. The night. Warriors was pretty great. The Warriors, yeah. the Warriors just, was pretty I great. The thing Freaking was so rules. much fun. The thing was fun. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because it was like sub zero I... outside. And... <laughs> Just perfect coming out of a theater at like midnight and being like, oh, God. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Now I have to go survive the the cold, dark night. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) This is how Kurt Russell must feel. (laughs) I can't wait to watch House again. With less money. It's got to be with people, though. I know. I've been streaming on HBO Max because of the, the Criterion. Uh, yeah. stuff and I've been yeah. debating about watching it with Kayla just to see her reaction. I think Sam is probably thinking the same thing too. We might just have to watch this. Oh, Maria Maria saw it with me. Oh Maria was she there. Was That's at, right. She was yeah, at yeah. the she was at the screening. I just kind of wanted to watch this. I just want to watch this again to be yeah. honest. I've scrolled past it on HBO Max a couple times and I've just been like, God, I should just hit play on this. Mm-hmm. I can't wait to Kind of like the state theater, find someone who has not seen it and show it to them, tell them nothing about it, and just to see their reaction. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's exactly it's, that type of movie. It's wild. It's mm-hmm. wild. And it's never boring. And either. I'd like, like to see it on a on a night that I was that I'm not like fighting to stay awake because mm-hmm. that was the weekend that we did mm-hmm. our little backlot film festival at SuperCon. Yeah. Oh, and that was the. Same I weekend. was just so freaking tired that night that i just mm-hmm. wanted to like uh, oh yeah at one point that. i like literally I had to put my chair up because i was like no if i if i stay reclined i'm gonna fall asleep that's why i'm glad it was house and not any other of the the, the movies i watched at the state because i probably would have fell asleep but this movie is so lively and vibrant and insane and bonkers yeah. where i'm like what the hell is gonna happen next i have to just sit and have my eyes glued to this Yep, 100%. All right, next up, one that uh, all of us went and watched, sat frickin' right front and center for, boys. One of the greatest movies ever, Bride of Frankenstein. Smoke good! (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Yeah, yeah. I I definitely love that Frankenstein partaked in uh, smoking some ganja. (laughs) <laughs> I, God, I love that movie so much. I swear, it's great. they mm-hmm. need to do they need to do a stoner comedy Frankenstein. At they did. Point. It's and called the Bride of Frankenstein. Mean, <laughs> and by they, I mean me. But I mean like an updated one. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Where Seth Where Rogen plays the monster. Direct. The high of Frankenstein in it with Seth Rogen as the monster. <laughs> yeah, the high of Frankenstein. <laughs> and I just play like the weird stoner guy who like who deals drugs in the little cabin just outside of town. And one day Frankenstein just happens to wander and we strike up a friendship. Maybe he accidentally sees a murder happen. We have to go on the run. Maybe <laughs> Danny McBride shows up. I don't know. I'm thinking like pineapple express meets, you know, bride of Frankenstein. Bride of Frankenstein. <laughs> <laughs> I would watch that. Yeah. Would watch that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I this just, movie's a bang. I, this I have movie's all these a, good ideas. Hollywood just needs to give me money. It's better than your Ghostbusters and Expendables idea, Sam. I think that would make bank. <laughs> We're uh, ready to bereave you. <laughs> Bride of Frankenstein, one of the greatest, in my opinion, one of the greatest movies of all time. I think this movie's just a certified five star classic. In every sense of the term, seeing this on the big screen is incredible. Like sitting, I know Blake. I stole this from you. What? Wa- watching the black and white movies as close as possible. Gotta, gotta do because it. you have to. Yeah, this is the first time I had done that. It's the best, and it's that's the best. Yeah, that's the best way to watch it. I did it for another Frankenstein movie too. Uh, had to sit as close as possible because that's the best way to watch these black and white movie. I watched Casablanca front row and that was um, incredible. <laughs> this is an incredible experience. Mm-hmm. But yeah, Bride of Frankenstein uh, you... was... What's up? Are you going to now bring up the movie that broke my heart? Yeah, I'm going to make Sam cry on the show. Uh, I watched Young Frankenstein in the theater. 
second row. Uh, wow. The crowd was the crowd. Wow. One that I missed that I genuinely like. Ah. Uh, mm-hmm. How did you? Why did you miss it? Wasn't in the cards that weekend. There was just way too much going on. Yeah. I like. We were gonna go to the Sunday matinee, and then it got to like literally. We were so busy. All of a sudden, we looked, and it was like. 20 minutes to show time. I was like, crap, we're not going to make it. <laughs> like, <laughs> mm-hmm. It was uh, a <laughs> I'll say the crowd ate this up completely. Good. Uh, Good. They were pl- it awesome. plays like a modern comedy, which is awesome uh, to see that with the crowd. It had been probably five, six, seven years since I had seen Young Frankenstein. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, this movie's incredible. I think it's, 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 it's my favorite Mel Brooks. Uh, I love it. It is... Yeah. Oh, Gene Wilder best. is just one of my favorite actors ever. I think he's so damn good. Hmm. Uh, yeah, this movie is is great. Laugh every every like ten minutes in this movie of like not even ten minutes, just like every every almost every scene. There's just a great laugh to to, to be had throughout this movie. Uh, the putting on the Ritz still every time he <laughs> the monster. Uh, <laughs> just gets me every single time he does it in the movie it's so freaking funny i love it uh yeah this movie's incredible uh yeah I, 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 I there's not enough great words to be said about frankenstein or young frankenstein and now i want to see every frankenstein movie that they play at the state because i'm two for two so far i've messed up my tim burton already i can't mess up the frankensteins I, I really want them to play the is it Abbott Costello meet Frankenstein? Oh, God. I, I've never I've never seen that one. So I've never love, seen it either. I would love for them to play that one because I hear it's like the best Frankenstein movie. So I really want to the see that one. Abbott and Costello monster movies are just incredible. Hmm. Speaking on Young Frankenstein, though, you know what? Marty Feldman freaking deserved an Oscar. For his work in that, it is one of the for playing great comedy performances, like ever. I can't think of a performance in a comedy that has made me laugh as hard as Marty Feldman in Young Frankenstein. Mm-hmm. Just his like, just his snippet way, just the suit yourself, I'm easy. It's just like everything he says is gold, and he takes mm-hmm. like simple lines and. Sp- like just the way he reads them is just incredible. Um, Marty Feldman is the MVP of Young mm-hmm. Frankenstein, and I, oh my god, I just I love this movie so much. I can't believe I missed it at the state. Also, I, I, I miss I, going to be doing a theater room night with it soon. I miss parody movies that are actually good and can actually tell a story, because that's the yes. big thing about Young Frankenstein. I'm like, that's just a good movie. Because you are mm-hmm. kind of just doing the Frankenstein story, but in a comedic fashion. But many spoof yeah. movies, especially nowadays, it's like they have to throw in as many references to other movies as possible. And it's like, why? Just tell a good story. Focus yeah. on one movie yeah. and make jokes throughout it because you can. Well, and even if you want to spoof multiple movies, find a plot, you know? Like, that's the biggest thing. Like, you still, you can't, it's not enough to just mm-hmm. make it like a stupid version of a bunch of different movies you have to have characters you care about like as zany and stupid and silly as young frankenstein is you care about every single one of those characters you know Mm -hmm. like i remember as a kid being a little freaked out actually when the monster kidnaps elizabeth you know like it's kind of freaky and then it Mm -hmm. gets funny again (laughs) but like I don't know. I just think that movie is so freaking masterful in balancing just that that comedic edge, but also having like there are some genuinely unsettling moments to me. Mm-hmm. Um, the look that Gene Wilder gets right before, of course, it turns funny again at the end when he's got the monster's brain and he's got that dead eye stare into the camera. It's creepy. You're like, oh god, like why is he staring at me like that? And then he rolls over. You hear the oh sweet mystery of life, and it's hilarious again. Mm-hmm. But like. Oh, we should just do a whole episode on Young Frankenstein because I could talk about that movie for hours. I love it. I love it. We are going to do a whole episode on Young Frankenstein. Just not oh, here, yeah. Sam. Oh, You're the yeah. one that suggested this. Oh, yeah. Come on. Jeez. That's right. I am. Um, I have, yeah. Duh. 
I suggest so many people, things. I forget. People will just have when to you wait take something I suggest. I just I I think it, I'm dreaming because mm -hmm. I just always throw so many things, and you're like, we're not going to do a Frank and Hooker month. We're not going <laughs> to talk Frank and Hooker for four weeks. <laughs> no, never. Uh, the Fly was another late night at the state that we were all at. Yeah, this this movie is a banger. The mm -hmm. this is. Surprisingly, I had three Cronenbergs this month, which is cool. Uh, yeah, The Fly is, uh, I, again, I hadn't seen it in probably six, seven years. Uh, so watching this with the crowd, the crowd was, I I think the d crowd was definitely into this one. Uh, There's a few people I could mm -hmm. see in the front when some of the body horror starts happening. Like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> like you, could hear, you could hear them or like see hands like, oh, no. Like, this, this, this movie, movie gets was gross. definitely working for the crowd. Yeah. It's also one of the most heartbreaking yeah. horror movies ever made. Like, Cronenberg is so masterful in this movie. And I think it's a lot of that goes to Gina Davis, too. I think this is just one of yep. the great female mm -hmm. performances of, of any horror movie. She's so much the heart of why this movie has an emotional core to it. That if it didn't I think have I her, as far as I say, it's just one of the best performances in general. Honestly, I think this movie belongs to her. Like mm -hmm. Goldblum is great, don't get me wrong, but like nothing it's... Goldblum does is effective without her. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're we're essentially her in the movie. So she, yeah. if she's not if she's not good enough in her reactions, then we kind of don't feel the pain that both of them are going through. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's oh, yeah, it's an excellent, she's excellent incredible. movie. She's incredible. Mm -hmm. That's the thing. Like, I walked out of that movie, and there's so many impressive things. Like, everything in that movie works. You know, there's not like a weak link about. I mean, I guess the character of is Mathis or whatever the the Gina her, Davis's her, guy her who boss. like, hmm. yeah, her boss. Um, you don't think I he's just, good? His one. No, he's good. I just feel like there's a weird, like, oh, he's kind of a creep who, like, breaks into her apartment. Well, he's got a... Turning he, that around to, like... Well, yeah, but it's still... He definitely still, is a creep who breaks into her apartment, though. He's, I yeah. mean, I'm not saying he's not a creep, yeah. but, I mean... Yeah, I don't know. I mean... It's just a good, weird... good like, at it. It's weird he's that also, the movie asks you to, like, all of a sudden turn around and be like, oh, he's a good guy because he's driving her to get an abortion. Do they... Like, you know what they, I mean? Do they say he's a good guy? Like, I don't think that's Maybe what the movie's not. trying to say. It just, I think it's more of he's yeah. a human. Yeah, I, 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 yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm more in that boat. I, you know, I. Yeah, I don't think he's a good like dude, said, but like, I think he does. I, I, I don't think he's a good dude, but he, he does good things in the movie. Yeah, yeah, that's a good way of putting it. He does just, the right thing in the end. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't. It doesn't like take away anything. I mean, I still rated this five out of five. It's yeah. It's incredible. I, I love mm -hmm. this movie. I just think that like if you had anybody besides Gina Davis in that role, I don't think this movie is no. the masterpiece that it is. No. I really don't. I I absolutely every time I watch this movie, that's the like that's the thing yeah. that gets me is Gina Davis. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's a great it's a great movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love this. I I love the movie. Uh yeah. There's there's so many good things you could say about it. Uh, it makes me want to watch the sequel, which I've never seen. Uh, I haven't seen it either. I'm sure it's not very good, but who knows? Also, uh, who knows? I'm I'm just gonna share this because I just found this out today. Sam, you know that fly shirt that I got that I wore to? Yeah. Uh, apparently, it glows in the dark, and says "So Fly." Out of Jeff Goldblum's gunk that comes out of his mouth. <laughs> That's which, so cool. Which Kayla saw my shirt in the dark. She's like, "Oh my god, it glows in the dark." Oh my god! Anyway, <laughs> uh, what else do I have? I only have one other state theater watch. Do you guys have any other? Ooh, ones? I'm not three more. Sure, I do that. Oh, I, I have one more. I have one more. I was about At least, to say, I can do yeah. my two because I know that we all have my last one. one. Okay, let's do that one last then. Okay. 
So I, I Halloween weekends, the Friday before Halloween, I double featured. I did Halloween in the theater, and then I did the late night of A Nightmare on Elm Street. Um, it was a fun night. Uh, Derek was there at both screenings. Uh, Corey and what? Lee ended up being at being at Nightmare. Yeah, yeah. Derek was at both Wait, screenings. Did you guys know that rip, Derek goes I to the same theater sometimes? I I've no never idea. seen him there. I had no idea. <laughs> um, yeah, and it was just I don't know. It was fun. We hung out between the between Halloween and Nightmare starting. Um, Halloween is was a weird experience for me. I'm really glad I saw it on the big screen. It's my favorite movie of all time. I really do love Halloween. Um, the weird thing was, was I was actually like, I feel like I'm more, more akin to watching it at home. It's like a cozy movie for me. Um, it's very cool on the big screen. I just, there's something that it loses a little bit in that environment for me because like when I grew up loving this, it was in a, it was in friends basements on crappy TVs, you know, like, and mm-hmm. and watching it so clear and crystal and like in a big theater and everything, it just it was cool. I'll definitely like I'm not gonna lie, I'll go again next year when they show it again next right. year on Halloween weekend, because they're gonna do it every year. You know uh, they also, are. Um also but like I just I, I mean, don't that, know. I, I like it better at home. Well, I mean also that movie takes place in homes. Mm-hmm. So yeah. the uh, the immediacy of the horror of the that movie is like it makes more sense to be in a, like watch it in a house and I, I mean I didn't go to it but yeah I want to see it in a movie theater just to say that I have seen it in a theater yeah. but yeah. um I I, th- I think the reason why you feel that is because like so much of it is people getting attacked in in their homes while being alone yeah. and I think that sort of plays into yeah. it as well I didn't yeah. make it out to either of these, but yeah, I will see Halloween in theater next year. Like, yeah. it's just I feel like I have to at least yeah, once. Me, yeah, I agree. I agree. Yeah, Nightmare on Elm Street. Uh, I know. And I want to hear why, Sam. That's why I went. I want to hear your thoughts, Sam, because I watched it last year at the West Mall. Uh, we watched Hocus Pocus, I actually did and then too. We, and then we watched Nightmare on Elm Street. Uh, yeah, both of those play great with the crowd. How was the yeah. the late night for it? Like the uh, the late up? night for it was a lot of fun. Okay. Um, I definitely think the crowd was into it. Um, it's Freddy. He's a fucking crowd pleaser, man. Like, I, I like the audience was really getting into it. Here's my issue. I just found out that I've just found out in the last year that I am not a double feature in the theater person. Mm. Um, I double featured Spiral and Army of the Dead earlier this year at a Cinemark. And That's your first problem. Was Sam. getting like antsy and just like wait, okay, wait, wait, wait. I've been sitting in this theater for too long, type of thing. Hold on, they someone played Army of Darkness, Army Army or of the Army Dead. of the Dead, the oh, Zack okay. Snyder movie. Okay, sorry, I don't know. Did I, I, did I yeah. hear that wrong? I might have heard um, it wrong actually. I might have said it wrong. Um, but yeah, so I did that and like I was getting kind of antsy. The Alien Aliens double feature at the state was awesome. But once again, like aliens started and I was getting kind of antsy and like it kind of abated as the movie went on and I got more into it. But like, I just don't think double features at the theater for me. Hmm. Plus, I was very tired that Friday night. And ironically, I was fighting sleep off mm. in a nightmare on Elm Street. Mm-hmm. Freddie got is you. A really like, yeah, he and it was like it was kind of funny because I'm like trying not to nod off and I'm feeling like what Nancy's feeling throughout mm-hmm. the whole thing. And so it added kind of an interesting element to it. Mm-hmm. Um, Here's a yeah, tip. I, I tip. dug it. Um, this is a tip I have, Sam. Between okay. the two, step outside and just like walk around the block and then go back in. Oh, I did. Okay. Still, and didn't work? Ah. Still just, yeah, I don't know. I'm just like it. I'm a, I'm a, I, I, fuss and i shuffle and i do all these like stupid like i have to be moving almost constantly mm. um if like if you see me like writing i get up and i pace and then i go back and i write a little bit more and like same with art i just i can't just sit i have to be active in in some way so mm-hmm. i'm just weird like that yeah but sometimes, like, I can sit on my couch for five hours and binge watch a TV series. So mm-hmm. I don't know. It's it's selective. But 
but no, I, hope I, you- I really enjoyed both of these movies and it was a great it was a great double feature to uh start my halloween weekend mm-hmm. with i hope next year the state plays another night on elm street play it play a sequel like that would be really cool just to see uh, how people react to those i want i want freddy's revenge on the big screen I, I mean, I would I be there. It's not Warriors. my fr- it, Dream Warriors is my my go to. Oh, Fucking Freddy's Revenge, just that's my that's my that's they my should, nightmare movie, man. I don't know. The, that should be their June late night at the state. Fucking I am ge- very jealous. Freddy's Revenge, right there. Ah, uh, uh, jealous. Well, uh, we talked about Michael. Talked about Freddy. Yeah. We talked about Freddy. Should we talk about, talk about Jason? Jason adjacent? adjacent. Uh, b- before we'll we talk do that, about adjacent. Oh wait, hold on. Before let's all end on that one. Yeah. Um, I just want to. I, I went to Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Okay. Um, Throw a leather that, face yeah. in there too. Yeah. 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 Uh, I, I I don't think much to add. I mean, like it's it's fucking Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Like it's it was incredible seeing the big screen. Um, I always thought like the opening. 30 minutes was kind of like, oh my God, let's just get somewhere. But like, it for some reason, like this screening, it really flew by. Um, and that last, that last like 40 minutes of the movie is just downright disgustingly, awfully mm-hmm. terrible. And the way the movie ends, how it's just like this guy swinging a chainsaw, you've been through hell. <clears throat> you could tell, I mean, you could just feel it that people were rattled walking out of the out of the theater like mm-hmm. they were like no one really said much um uh our, our 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 friend local lou like she was like that was fucking terrifying um i <laughs> it just just like it, it played so well yeah. so that was a great great late night screening um and i i, I oh, it was so good it was so i know good. i'm i'm That's sad part of the reason i didn't stick around and it was so loud was that so... chainsaw just Oh, so good. I know. I that's was just that's in a how I was feeling too. That night where I was like, I couldn't do it. No, I get it. I get it. And 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 it, and I I felt that fatigue overall. I mean, I didn't watch any movies, any horror movies past the 29th of twenty eighth of October. So that I was feeling the fatigue as well with with in, in general, I should say. So yeah, and that's um, not a yeah. fun movie to watch. No, it's not. Yeah, no. it's, it's not yeah. a fun movie. It's, that's it's why I'm li- like, if it, if it was Texas Chainsaw Massacre too, I'd be singing a different tune. Yeah, and I'd be I, there. But I would have, I, I would have stayed for that. Yeah, yeah I, I'm, because I'm that's a, a fun movie to watch. I, I'm definitely going to campaign. Like, I'm definitely going to campaign for that one next year. Like yes. it, it, that one is uh, a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. We're, Honestly, big fans of that one. So, mm-hmm. all right, last one then. We got all we're, we're hitting all the or- horror icons that they had at the state. Uh, they already had technically a Friday the Thirteenth late night earlier the year. Uh, this, <laughs> it was so much fun. Which was it was a blast. Uh, yeah, that movie's great. No one can tell me otherwise. Uh, this time we are watch we watched the brand new. Friday the 13th adjacent film, the new release 13 fanboy uh, with uh, assistant director and friend of friend of us, all of us, Dominic Winicky, uh, there to do mm-hmm. a Q&A after uh, 13 fanboy directed by friend of the show, Deborah oh. Voorhees, who Casey and I got to interview. <laughs> She's so awesome. She is cool. She is the best. <laughs> I did not give a, a Dominic a hug like she asked me to. I should have. Dang it. I haven't Sorry, seen Dominic. Dominic since. Dominic, when I see you next, I'm going to hug you. <laughs> be ready. Be, war- be warned. <laughs> be afraid. Be very afraid. Uh, yeah, 13 fans. I'll try board. to remember deodorant that day. What did you? What What are your guys' thoughts on Thirteen Fanboy? I guess we can kind of talk about the plot very briefly about what this movie is. If people don't know what it is, uh, it is about this serial killer who grew up on the Friday the Thirteenth and Halloween, Nightmare on Elm Streets, basically horror fans uh, who grew up on them. But he grew up to be so obsessed with these movies that he uh, became obsessed with the actors and actresses in them. 
and would stalk them and begins to kill them off one by one in very graphic ways. Mm-hmm. I mean, it stars yeah. Deborah, um, Deborah Voorhees, D. Wallace, Kane Hodder, uh, C.J. Graham. Dominic uh, Winicky. Dominic Winicky gets a couple yeah. cameos in this. Corey Feldman. Corey Feldman, not playing one Corey the, Feldman. Yeah, one of the few <laughs> actors not playing a version of themselves. He's so he's so great. In this. <laughs> I love what he's doing here. Oh, Corey Feldman is so much fun to watch. No, I, mm-hmm. I, I dug this movie a lot. Um it was it, it was flawed, like just about any slasher movie, you know? Mm-hmm. Like takes some weird swings and some of them don't always work, but like this movie's got some balls on it, and I just, yeah. I don't know. I I dug a lot of it. Uh, it was fun seeing all the, uh, all the actors and actresses and, um, just doing their thing. Uh, and the kills were great. The mop kill in particular was just so gross, and I was like, mm-hmm. yeah. And yeah, I I dug this a lot, and you you and Andy nailed the post screening Q and A. So. Yeah, that was that was fun. It was nice to hear Dominic finally be able to talk about this yeah, movie. Yeah. He's only been talking yeah. to us about two years about this movie, and uh, it was cool to, yeah. to to chat with him finally about it. Yeah, this is a movie that's like, how did this movie get made? Like, it seems like there's no possible way this movie would ever exist, where you have actors playing themselves in a very much like why why would you want to play this version of yourself in some ways of yeah. a fan going out and killing people and then playing the their their you know a version of themselves in real life um but i think it pulls it off pretty effectively uh it gets to have some of the actors get some dramatic moments you don't otherwise see including kane hodder who yeah, yeah just give that man some more dramatic stuff i think he's 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 pretty great at it he's not just jason or Victor Crowley, he can do a little more yeah. than that. Uh, yeah. Is he That's Victor Crowley? Man. Yeah. I don't know why I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. And he plays Victor Crowley's God, dad that. in those movies and gets a little dramatic moments in those, too. Man. Yeah. I love Kane, those movies. Kane Hodder rules. Uh, yeah, this movie's a ton of fun. Uh, the twist, especially with like the twist at the end, and I'm not going to give it away, of who the killer yeah. is. Is like, oh, all right, all right, we're going this this route. Like that's that's cool. It's a gutsy move, and I think it, it works. Like that's mm-hmm. the thing. Like I think it genuinely works, and that's something that I was like, most most horror movies kind of fall flat in the end, and I felt like this one, like, I felt like this one consistently got better as it went. I mean, the, the opening sequence was pretty terrifying with, with Deborah Voorhees and her small role that she has. Um, I liked I liked the way that was done. And then it kind of, I don't know, like I felt like at times the movie was kind of going in circles. Like I'm like, okay, where, where are we going with this? And then by the end of it, I was hooked in again. I was like, this is, this is so much fun. I just had a blast with this movie, you mm-hmm. know? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I've like always loved these, uh, dare I say, littler horror movies that, that, that are made more on like blood and like tears and sweat. And it was just really nice to sort of see this in a theater um, with, a, with a friend of ours who puts so much of all of that into it and, you know, honestly really cares yeah. about the product. And um, I mean, like, by no means is it one of the, the best I've ever seen, but yeah. there's something to say about just this community. Um, that kind of rallies around itself to um, just show love to each other, and I think this this movie yeah. is a, just a really good example of that. And I just like I had as much fun watching it in a theater, and sort of like smiling throughout, just knowing that in a way, like our community is just tied to it. And um, I, I I just really enjoyed it on that level, and and I'm not saying it's it's yeah. not good i i really enjoyed it i think d wallace is incredible in it and uh yeah she's the a, guy yeah. the guy who played her husband i just i totally loved his mm-hmm. he's kind of a doofus <laughs> in a way and yeah i just i really i really dug that whole thing um he was like the dad from the halloween 18 movie but actually good 
Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> who's who's from uh, Friday the 13th Part 5. Is he really? Yeah. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. He wears, he has like the skull cap on in that movie. Oh, okay. He's also, I, I know him from Seinfeld, but um, yeah, so I, I, I really, I really had a lot of fun with this. Um, I think, I think this is the day where I watched like three movies in a row or something like that. It was pretty crazy. But um, I'm pretty sure you hit Titan this and then didn't you go to no, t- TCM? No. Titan was before House. Titan was th- the weekend of oh, the that's right, Supercon. That's right. I think I, I think I did. Yeah. I think I, I think I did them, and then this, and then that's right. Mm. TCM. But wow. anyways, I, I, I really had a lot of fun with this. It was a special night for sort of all of us in a way, particularly Dom. Yeah. And uh, I just, I, I hope for like more of this stuff where hopefully we grow our little horror and film community more, where we kind of get more people to show up for stuff like this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. This is one of those yeah, that I, 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 I do, I do wish there was a bigger crowd, but I'm like the crowd there, I think was really, uh, accept- I think that, yeah, I think they really dug it. it and yeah, really absolutely. Dug it. Yeah. 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 Yeah, absolutely. It was a Congratulations, very receptive Dom. crowd. I'd say. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Awesome work. This thing looks incredible. Yeah. Yeah. It looks great. Sounds like, great. Like so loud. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Dom, keep I, keep making more movies, yeah. please. We wanna we wanna watch more and hopefully make them here. Hopefully, too. yes, yeah, uh, yeah. That's is that it for our state theater watches? That's I, all I watched. Yeah, I, I'm done. That's all I got. <laughs> I didn't get to everything I wanted, but that's that's what yeah, next next year's for. It is what it is. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Oh, I thought you meant talking. I'm like, oh, what? talking. Yeah, I'm, what I'm more done. did you I'm, watch? I'm done talking. Okay. Yes. Yes. Like, yes. Um, Besides no, our yeah. our fan slashing very quickly oh, here. I didn't even think about that. Shit. <laughs> That's okay. I've got. I, I, you know what? I don't care. I'm gonna. I'm pulling a favorite out. But yeah, we can. We can okay. do it. So Stephen and Allison, if you are listening to this podcast, please take these into consideration for next year. Pretty please. Uh, we would. You'd at least sell probably three tickets right here. You sell at least so. three tickets easily. Yeah. So that that's that's good. Yeah. Uh yeah. So let's get into you guys would come to mind. All right. We'll we'll hear it in just a second. We're pitching our late night at the state for October of twenty twenty two. Sam, you want to go first, huh? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> My late night for the yeah. state. Mm-hmm. Twenty twenty two in October. Yep. I want them to play Frank and Hook. Now, I'm aware that Frankenhooker is not a mainstream movie, but neither is House, okay? So I think you could still get butts in seats for Frankenhooker. Chances are they're going to go with a more classic Hen and Lauder, like Basket Case or Brain Damage. But there is something about Frankenhooker and the gender politics that it represents. and. I, I just, this movie is trashy, it's sleazy, and yet it's now being hailed as like a modern feminist classic, and I totally can see why. I don't know if it was made with that in mind. I don't think it probably was. But it somehow accidentally stumbled upon this message that is just, I don't know, it's incredible. I love this movie. I've watched it twice since it hit Shudder. Um, it's kind of turning into my new chopping mall and I would love to see this on the big screen. It's on my state theater watch wish list on letterboxd. So Steven knows, plus I bring it up to him all the time. <laughs> yeah. But Steven, if you're listening just one more time, like, please play Frank and hooker. I promise at least three people will buy tickets. It's true. I would go to this. Yeah, um, I, I would too. I, I not not to not to say it, it's not worth it. I'm not saying that. You, you might have more success if it's like in a double feature with like a classic movie. You know, Play, and, and, oh, and to be to yeah. be fair, mine probably would too. Honestly, play so. OG Frankenstein and then exactly. Frank and Hooker right after. Exactly. Yep. I would do that. Yeah. Yeah. One hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. I need to watch that movie already. I love some Frank, I, Frank Hen and Lauder, but I need to I see that, like, man. I watched like 10 it's minutes wild. of it like 30 years ago or maybe not long, that long ago, but 25 years or so ago. And uh, it's pretty wild. 
it's pretty wild. Was it the opening 10 minutes? I think so. I think there's a lawnmower accident in the opening 10 minutes. That's the most ridiculous thing you've ever seen, and I love it. (laughs) I thought there was a scene with a chainsaw, right? Oh, no. Hold on, hold on. I watched Hollywood Chainsaw Hookers. That's what I watched. (laughs) No. No, so Frank yeah, and my bad. starts my with, bad. A, with a lawnmower accident. I watched Tower um, Chainsaw Hookers. Do not play that one, Stephen and Allison. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'll, I'll, my, that's, oh, yeah. do you want to go, Blake? I can go. Yeah, you're the host. Um, mine is no surprise. Listen, we got to have demons at the State Theater. Um, yes. just, sorry, Sam. I, I, I know you're not a huge of fan of it. Um, oh, but I would like, watch it at the State in a heartbeat. I think I liked it. I just didn't. I know. I know. I know. I think people would really not to like, I don't, I I just, I feel like this is sort of like a, maybe it's either a cult movie waiting to happen or like a new classic waiting to happen. I just feel like it has all those elements to it where it's sort of wild and it has a great soundtrack, great kills, Mm -hmm. great Mm -hmm. imagery, um, great ending. And like the reason why I want to play at the state theater is because the movie takes place in an old theater, mm-hmm. and I think if people understood that concept and um, bought into it, they could be like, "Whoa, I'm, it's, it's 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 not quite like a meta thing, but in, in a way, it kind of is. It's like I'm watching this movie that takes place in an old theater that w- I'm watching it in an older theater, and yeah. uh, I I just think like. Like I played it at a, one of my movie nights for a bunch of friends, and they all ate it up. They all loved it. They're like, "Whoa, this this movie kills!" Um, and I think if like more people discovered it, they'd be like, "Yeah, this is one of the better uh, undiscovered gems of the '80s." And I just think it, this the setting would really play into that. So that's my pitch: Demons, yeah, mm-hmm. 1985, one of my favorites. I got the 4K. I haven't watched it yet, but um, yeah. it rips so hard. What are you we know, talking I about? Think that- Go ahead, Sam. What? Sam. I, I was just going to say, I think that like kind of almost the opposite of Halloween for me, I feel like watching this in a theater mm-hmm. would actually make me appreciate it and enjoy it more. Sure, sure, yeah. You That's know, because like the whole time I was watching it, I'm like, this should be a cinematic experience. Like this should have been a theater room watch. That's exactly what I was going to That's exactly what I was going to say. When you guys were talking about watching Halloween at home, I was like, frick, they need to play demons at the state because like, I think, mm-hmm. like Sam said, that's going to add to that experience and, of watching it in a theater because that's where you're at immediately. And, and, and to and to join my comment about Sam's movie is like, I don't care if you got to play this after, you know, like TCM two or, or something bigger. Like, right? You just need to get eyeballs on this on this movie. And same thing with Frankenhooker. Mm-hmm. Like, just I, I don't care how it plays. Just get eyeballs on it. And if it's got to play after a, a, a bigger banger, then I'm I'm totally okay with that too. Mm-hmm. They so. should do a young Frankenstein Frankenhooker <laughs> double feature because there that would be my dream night. Yeah, there you go. That would be like chopping mall night of the comet levels of hell. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. Casey, what's yours? All right, mine uh, late night at the state. I would love to see Lucio Fulci's The Beyond. Yeah, oh my god, that yes. is not what I was expecting you to say. I did. Dude, that I haven't a, seen The Beyond yet. It's a big I screen movie. Mm-hmm. Oh like, my! Just god. to watch this at ten o'clock at night on the big screen. Yes, where it's just completely dark outside. You're in this theater with all these other people, just experiencing this movie. Like this is an experience, and like to see this on the big screen would be incredible. The score too to hear that come out of the the it, sound system there, yeah. Yeah, and and the movie's got like that dazed feeling to it, where mm-hmm. you, you like it, it like it's kind of like you've been up for like twenty four hours, and you're starting to like see things, and sort of like you know they they, they basically say that if if like you're up for twenty four hours and you drive a car, it's the same thing as being drunk. Like it's it's the same. You, your your body's affected that much. That movie has that quality where mm-hmm. you're kind of in this state of like dreamlike quality, like nightmare logic type thing, and that movie would kill late at night. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. That's a great pick. Shit, I Fulci is a total blind spot for me, so it would be cool to see it. 
I would, because I would he kills go. eyeballs all the time, right? And- <laughs> That's part of it. Yeah, yeah, that is part of it. I, the eyeball thing. <laughs> you guys ever? Did you guys ever watch the the movie Feast? Where it's like the monster alien. Is that the Matt Damon the movie or something? Yeah, Matt yeah. Damon produced it through his okay. like green light thing. Yeah, it's like I... super low budget from like 2005. Yeah, I, I I remember watching it a long time ago. There's a scene in which a character is looking out a hole in the wall of this bar that they're holed up in with like giant monster aliens attacking them, and it comes in and grabs his eye and like rips it out, and you see like all the tendons like unspooling out of his fucking eye cavity and like the whole time i'm sitting there watching this movie going <laughs> like I someone, know eye stuff just wigs me out man <laughs> someone did the research on lucio fulci yeah. movies then because lucio fulci hates eyeballs for yeah. some reason yeah i've been hovering over feast for a while on some streaming service i might have it's- to click click play now it's not very good, but it is worth yeah. a watch. I've I've revisited it. Like I think I've watched it about three times in my life. Um, once back in like early high school or late 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 middle school, and then I watched it again when I lived in Des Moines. And I just rewatched it like maybe a year or two ago. And I'm like, no, this movie's fun. Like it's fun. It's nothing more than that. But yeah, I recommend Feast. All right, that would also be a good late night at the state. <laughs> What we're saying is, is that every movie, yeah, we've talked about tonight would be a great late night movie. So mm-hmm. yes, including uh, Scoot. Slumber Party Massacre Two was another one I was yes. debating the entire time here. You wouldn't even need to play the first one. I love the first one, but you a could start of, with two. Yeah, I feel like a lot of movies that I would want to see are like years down the road when, like, we've built a community that just comes out to everything. Yeah, I'm tell I'm telling you guys, I don't know if you guys have seen them, but Wreck and Wreck Two back to back would kill so hard would kill so hard people will be running from their seats it just anyway yeah Mm -hmm. i'm I'm for that just so (laughs) i don't have to watch a shitty dub off youtube (laughs) i might have to buy like that box set blu-ray because because the first two movies are are just so good you know what also i'm sorry we're just gonna keep going with recommendations for late nights grave encounters would kill at a late night oh god Grave Encounters with, uh, uh, is it the uh, Hotel Hell or what was that movie? That Motel oh. Hell? No, 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 no. <laughs> Motel Hell would rule too. No. Uh, <laughs> I've never seen Hell. Motel Hell. We, in, too. we interviewed Hell, the directors. Hell, of, Hell House LLC. Yes, Hell House. Oh, my God. That would play so well to yeah. a, a crowd. But, it's another franchise. Yeah. It's a blind spot. You need to watch. Those are rules, Sam. Hell House. Yeah, and I actually I heard... just re- I just rewatched Grave Encounters too. We watched that right after <sighs> Ghost Watch. You know, nice. that was one that I really, really wanted to rewatch this year, and I just did not find time to. But I really, really want to. Yeah, I, it's, I, it's a great movie. It's so good. I'm waiting for uh, that's one. I'm waiting for like the cult status of it to start picking up. Like, yeah, where's absolutely. our like Grave Encounters like T-shirts and stuff? Like, where's that? Uh, stuff? No kidding. So good. Cavity colors. Get on it. I know yeah. you listen to this podcast. Every maybe every time they do for sure. I buy so many of your shirts. Just listen to my podcast. <laughs> Make a Grave Encounter shirt, please. Please. And then do a Jennifer's Body line. There Still has to be Jennifer, that. Jennifer's Body's line of somewhere out there. Gotta be. There has to be. All right, Sam quit the show. Oh, no, he's oh. back. I don't know what just happened. That was a ghost telling us we need to wrap this shit up. <laughs> My phone's battery life is telling me I have to wrap it up too. <laughs> yeah, actually, my iPad's getting down too. <laughs> All right, let's quickly let's quickly get through our plugs then. Uh... All right. <laughs> well, you can find us pretty much anywhere. Just go to anchor.fm slash 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 lot podcast. Uh, <laughs> that's where you can find us. Uh, we're on like Spotify and Apple and pretty much anywhere you can find us. Yeah. You can you can find this podcast. Yeah. And then we're on uh, and- Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, uh, at Backlot605. Uh, that's where you can find us on there. All, all, all three of us are doing shiznit on there. Oh, uh, yeah. But yeah. And then do you want me to plug the... Plug the... The, the Patreon? That, your huge. Okay. Okay. Cool. Uh, yeah, we're also on Patreon, where if you, you uh, pay to be part of our Patreon, you get four extra episodes uh, a month. Blake is a patreon would you say it's would you say it's worth it blake barely 
<laughs> no, I, I, I'm just kidding. I uh, so I was talking to Casey like recently, and like I forgot. I, I don't know why. I, I I I listen to so many podcasts on the podcast app. That I forget about Patreon, so I'm like slowly catching up on <laughs> like stuff. And also, I don't watch a lot of new stuff that you guys do. So yeah. when I do, mm-hmm. oh, so I I just listened serious. to okay. uh, I just listened to uh, no, no time, time to, to die, die. Yeah. 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 Yeah, 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 which was a fun oh that was such a fun conversation yeah so yeah join us on Patreon we're doing stuff like that all the time we have polls you can help pick like what we yeah. do next for movie series and things so yeah yeah what's Hello the me? next poll probably for December we'll have something yeah. because I think we have one movie set for then and that's I think so yeah I think we only have one new release in December two new releases in oh, December wow. so that's I think it? Yeah, the other yeah. two the other two will be the uh, patrons I think wow. yeah. Pick this stuff. yeah maybe a, a De Palma movie who knows mm. since it is going to be De Palma December who knows De Palma, December, the movies. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Blake, um, plug, plug the Criterion break where they can listen to you guys <laughs> get real <laughs> horny about cat people. Oh, d- dude, dude, dude. Uh, spoilers for our next episode. We get really horny. Like, yeah. we so legit what, talk. What, what movie? Oh, what was it? Um. Gosh, I don't even remember now. I just remember like Andy got yeah. really ho- Andy got really horny, and then I was like, "Dude, I'm getting horny too about this." You don't need to pay for that on that show. Geez. We just got we got no, I, I forget that we just recorded it anyway. We uh, I, I uh, I'm on the podcast Criterion Break with Andy uh, Heller on his channel and Derek Vierink, Um and we talk about Criterion uh, movies. Uh, we just uh, we just did part one of our Criterion wish list of movies we wish were on that Criterion uh, uh, collection, and I, I'm just like now really upset that I can't remember what movie we got super horny over. Well, just leave people in suspense. To listen yeah, you're to the you're just gonna have to be horny for the horniness because uh, it's <laughs> it's there. I think that one comes out in like two weeks. So, uh, oh no, it comes out tomorrow. I, I apologize. Well, awesome. when, when, when is this going up? I'm sorry. It should be out by the time this does. I think so, tomorrow, though, has, oh, unless Andy's is switching up his schedule, I know there is a cool interview he's doing. That, that comes out next week, I think. Next week? Okay. Yeah. I'm pretty sure Derek and I talked him into releasing it on Friday the 12th. So I think that comes out on the okay. 12th. Cool. And uh, it's a lot of fun. We, we, had, we had a lot of fun recording it. I... <laughs> Spoilers, I was somehow I, – I, for, for the record, Derek and I did not talk about our picks beforehand. I was somehow able to predict every single Derek pick. I, <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't know how. We, we didn't discuss anything. But whenever Derek described one movie, I was like, I know what this is. Um, so anyway, uh, that was a lot of fun. Um, go listen to it. It's, we, we had a lot of fun recording it. So Yeah. That's awesome. Yep. Go look up Fat Dude Digs Flicks. That's where it's at. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Fat Dude Digs Flicks. <sighs> All right. Cool. I think that's it. Uh, next time we come back, uh, <laughs> I think we're going to wait till December. Yes. Uh, we ha- well, I have to. <laughs> you guys can record. And I think that, that's, that's, that's why. We, we want Blake back. Uh, what, are, what, yeah. are we, what are we doing? I don't know what we're even doing. Black Christmas triple feature. Oh, God. Original versus remake versus remake. I think we got to wait for Black Christmas. So um, Maybe we talk about uh, like underrated horror Christmas, including uh, what's, what's, what's Incl- uh, including, including the Black Krampus. Christmas remake? Krampus sucks. Uh, you suck. The, the dial, dial code. Oh, dial code Santa Claus? Yeah, let's oh, talk yeah. about I've never yeah. seen it. Let's talk about like some Christmas. Horror. Yeah, Christmas okay. evil. Okay. Yeah. Christmas yeah. evil rules. Let's yeah. stop the recording so we can talk about some stuff. Yeah. Yeah. We'll <laughs> okay. we'll figure it out. Christmas horror. That's the <laughs> Bye, next everybody. thing. Bye everybody. So thank you all. See you in a month. Bye. Spooky later. Spooky later.